Yep, Charlemagne the Guardian. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. Yes. Uh, happy New Year, motherfuckers. First of all, let me tell you something. I don't believe in saying Happy New Year no more. I Why think is that? That shit is whack. Why is that? Because it's motherfucking January what? Well, as of right now, it's January 7th. Okay, six days after the New Year. This sounds like a cruise ship joke that a comedian tells. There is no cruise ship How joke. How many days after New Year are we still going to say Happy New Year? That is a legitimate Year. question. There's two things that you worry about after the holidays. Number one, when do you stop saying Happy New Year's? Number two, when do you take when do you take down your Christmas shit? I say Happy New Year's because I don't know what the fuck to say to somebody sometimes. And it's a nice, calm, it's like a nice, uh, kind way to greet somebody. You know what you say to them? Go. The same thing you say to them in February, March, April, May, June, July, August, Which September, is? and October. Whatever. What's up, bro? Peace. How are you? Yeah, but sometimes you don't want to have a whole conversation, but you want to know that you appreciate that person. So you Not go, hey, man, happy new year. I hope everything's going well for you. All I right. like to be very politically correct. When it's the holidays, I like to just say happy holidays. When it's Christmas, Merry Christmas. The day after Christmas, yeah. happy holidays again. No happy Hanukkah? It, no, happy holidays. That covers everything. That covers Kwanzaa. That covers, but you that will, covers Christmas holiday Kwanzaa. You will hit Christmas, but you won't hit Hanukkah. I say happy holidays. But you said you do on Christmas. On the day of Christmas? Yes, Merry Christmas. Same. Where's a Hanukkah? You got eight days. You can't is throw Hanukkah, Hanukkah out there? Is Hanukkah on Christmas No, day? Hanukkah, Hanukkah. That's why I don't say Hanukkah, because it's not on Christmas Day, Schultz. I'm saying, do you say happy Hanukkah on Hanukkah? No, I say happy holidays, because I don't know who's who. I can't just look at a person and say, hey, they celebrate Hanukkah. What if they got a yarmulke? Oh, that's different. But I still wouldn't say Hanukkah. I just be like, hey, happy holidays. That's messed up, man. No, it's not. It covers all bases. That's and just because up. they wear a yarmulke does not mean they're celebrating Hanukkah. They could be in the Kwanzaa. Okay. That's some. No. Wait, people who wear in Kwanzaa wear a yarmulke? You I don't bullshit. <laughs> don't take advantage of my lack of Kwanzaa knowledge. I'm sitting here looking at me. Fuck this. I don't know about some black shit right now. Listen, I got to figure this out. What if you got long dreads and a bald spot? That's a yarmulke. It's a, it's a bald spot that yeah. only a yarmulke could fit on. You don't want to wear a fitted cap. You just throw a yarmulke Yo, on. Yo, that's my theory on how the yarmulke came about. Coming up the it it wasn't even a, something for God. It was just, this is embarrassing walking around, you know, Nazareth with this shit like this. Yeah. I need to cover up my baldy. Boom. Boom. Happy holidays. Maybe. Wow. Wow. Maybe that was the first toupee. Do you know what I mean? There's I something I here. I don't know. I feel like we're, I feel like we're trading on... Thin water, thin ice. Right you get now. nervous talking yeah, you know about Jews right now. We're gonna get a phone Jewish call. Jewish <laughs> people don't say that. Don't you can shortage. say Jews. Oh, you can. Well, yeah, because my name is like Jewish sounding, yeah. so I can say it. <laughs> I feel like they hear me say it. They're like, "Oh no, there's no animosity in that." He's a Schultz. Hey, man, I'm not going to chase no other racial slurs. I'm gonna just stick to the niggas and. Um, well, that word I won't touch. You used to. Okay. <laughs> now, Squarespace. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Oh, is it? Yes. Recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7, which has a completely redesigned interface, mm. integrations with Getty Images and Google Apps, 15 uh. new templates, and an incredible feature called uh. Cover Pages. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code IDIOTS at checkout to get 10% off. Now, somebody asked me, is that 10% off t-shirts that are on brilliantidiots.com? No. That has nothing to do with Absolutely nothing. And thank okay. you for buying up all the t-shirts. Yeah. God damn. Just because Squarespace uh, did our website, you cannot use that code to get 10% off T-shirts. Mm -mm. We're not doing deals on T-shirts. I think our T-shirt is a reasonable price. I also have to say I have our T-shirt lady uh, looking into, um, for what is it, international shipping. Because we've been getting a lot of inquiries from Scotland, England, yeah. Australia, all these other places about some T-shirts. And we're, we're looking into it. We're going to get it popping. And this show is also brought to you by Nature Box. Nature Box ships great tasting, wholesome snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machines and start snacking smarter with the wholesome, delicious treats like dark cocoa almonds. Support this podcast by ordering a free Nature Box sampler. Free. Free Nature Box sampler at naturebox.com slash idiots. That's right. It is free. Nature Box snacks are found at naturebox.com slash idiots. Where's the money for the t-shirts? I yes. don't know. if that. Uh, what's up, yeah, Chris? It should Talk be us, Chris. We got a guest. Chris Morrow here, ladies and gentlemen. Chris is on the mic now that he's jobless. He's, he's the producer of the... Brilliant. Jobless Chris! Producer. What's up, Jobless Chris? What? Jobless Chris came so swagged out now that he doesn't have a job. Yeah, this is uh, one of the CEOs of the Loudspeaker Network. The yeah. Reed, Combat Jack Show, Fan Duel, Brilliant Idiots. All that good shit. Chris runs this shit. And? And um, I really appreciate all the people who've submitted the cities they'd like the Brilliant Idiots to come to. Yeah. What we're looking for is actual promoters... We're going to put together. We want pack. people to put do all the work. Up, we, bro, bro. Yeah. Right. Make it we, real. We need people with exactly. budgets. We appreciate all the come to Houston's. I'll tell you uh, just real quickly, speaking about international, where we're getting a tremendous amount of requests to go to. England. London. 
We got to go to London. 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 England in general, man. I'm here in Manchester. I'm here in a lot of these places. I got a lot of love for London. Salute to my dog, Tim Westwood, out there. I went. I was in London like last year. I know. You got I a went great for a reception. Salute to my dude, uh, DJ, um, DJ Obi. You know, he loves the Notorious B.I.G. Who doesn't? Yeah. No, he lo- No, he loves him. Like, like his, in what way? He, he recreates his album covers. He recreates old photos of Big and does them and puts them up as his Twitter pictures. And wow. Facebook profile pictures and all that shit. You know, I'm offended that he's appropriating black culture. He literally, no, he's black. But he's not American black. No, he's not. He got on the it's microphone different. in the club and rapped Bone, hit Biggie's verse off oh, Bone, Bone Thugs. thugs. And it wasn't Armed and a, Dangerous. It wasn't even Ain't a no, record. It huh? was like some other record was on. He just but jumped he grabbed up it like, anyway. Armed and Dangerous. Can't Ain't no man can bang with us. us. Straight up, we ain't no way to us. Label us. Notorious. Yeah. A lot of love, man. A lot of love out there in London. Can we bring in our guests? Let's yeah, get we, right can, to we it. can get it, man. Let's do it. And bring in, bring in Chip. Somebody, go, go, can you go get him back? Yeah, absolutely. Chris? Yeah, so any London uh, promoters. Yes. What's the email? Uh, info at brilliantidiots.com, I believe. Yeah. Cut the check, bro. We did, need- did we start a new one? <laughs> We're going to. And All listen, right. we got mad love for y'all, but when we say we want to come to these cities, we need to see some. We don't love. just want to fly into the city and <laughs> nah. have a drink with y'all. We uh-uh. want the promoter to pay. We want money for us to do our thing. We are professionals. We're professionals, you man. know. And you, you got to pay professionals. That's part of it. It's all good though. I have no problem. I'm glad you got on your black Tims right now. You know what I'm saying? Because our guest today, he's uh, very familiar with Timberlands. You know Why what I'm saying? Is that? Black Timberlands. Timberlands as a whole is a real Brooklyn thing. Is it now? Yeah, this guy we're bringing in, um, you may or may not know him. Uh, I'm, I'm the type of person, I love interviewing people who I'm just a fan of their personalities. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen this guy on Twitter. Yeah. And, I've you know, I've met him in person a couple person a couple of times. He's definitely got a couple screws loose because he's been shot. He almost died. Wow. And he's never been the same ever since. Okay. He, he's, very, he's, he's very off. Where'd he get shot? I don't know. We can ask him. I just know he got shot. Okay, and how'd you meet this guy? Um, I met him. Through, I actually met him through Naima Supreme. Remember Naima we had on the podcast before? Yeah. He um he rolls heavy with Naima Supreme, and um I met him one time. The first time I met him is this guy a liability? He, definitely. First time I met him, he walked. Why up would on, we do this to ourselves? First time I met him, he what walked up on me. And he goes, on? he goes, yo, just want you to know, the people that did the can I get a drop thing to you? They're taking care. The guy care. that hit you, he's dead. <laughs> I'm like, all right, no doubt. Like, nah, I just want you to know that. I'm like, okay. All right. Yeah, Chip, you just going to stand over here? I think you might have to go and, over and, there. And, we got a camera and, over and, here. And, go right there. You can stand right here? Yeah. You need a chair? You get a stool for him, Chris? Yeah, I got you. You, you got the seat right there. And, and then our guest today, my guy. I was just I was just talking about you. I was talking about the first time I met you. Oh man! And the Hello. first time I met you, hey, pull the mic a little closer to you, buddy. <laughs> my, my What's man, up, Tax? Tax? Stone What's going there? on? How, How you, you doing, doing man? Brooklyn, you Brooklyn's own, right? Yeah, man, Brooklyn, man. I got a cold, and you have a Brooklyn voice. I do. I feel like that's how dudes from Brooklyn sound. Yeah, when I, you know, when I, I remember being, I was ten years old with this voice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you gotta, you gotta. Yo, can uh, I get some juice, please? You gotta imagine calling your Ma. girlfriend's house and her mother yeah. picking up, <laughs> thinking it was Bill Cosby. You know? <laughs> that's not Cosby's voice. That's a grown man's voice but right I, there. I that's working construction. The first time I met Tax, he was with Naima Supreme, and he goes, "Yo, I want you to know them dudes. Did they can I get a drop shit? Dude, that did that shit hit you? Yeah. He's dead." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, alright. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious, like, man. I don't even know how to reply to that. Okay. What was hilarious? Yeah. What, what was hilarious? You know, I felt like it was like a, you know, uh, a gift. You know. <laughs> you know. That's your peace offer. That's, That's your peace offer. Charlotte gonna have some information. Hey, you know, the guy that attacked you died yesterday. You know, <laughs> he, he had butted a bullet somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, Tax, you been shot before, though. Yeah. You said you almost died. Yeah, I got shot in my face. What? Yeah, when was my this? left eye. I got shot right here, and it came out right here on my sideburn with but a thirty-eight. People, Damn. people, can you look into, do we have a camera on, on I him? I think that's this probably why one side of my face is bigger than the other. I don't think one side is. It is. You got to, like, you got to look at it. I took a, I took a selfie because I just cut all my facial hair off today. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like, damn, one side of my face go, is bigger Chip. than the other. Yeah, yeah, but I definitely, yeah, I got shot in my face. But listen, how, backpack, how, how, your backpack right there. Oh, this ain't mine. Who's back? Is this yours, Max? No, yeah. Now, how old were you you got shot, Tax? Because you a young guy. Um, not- yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, tw- I'm 29 now. Um, I got shot when I was 22. Okay. And so, what, what happened? What was the story? You know, I talk too much shit. 
You know what I mean? Tax is definitely a professional shit talker. I talk a lot of shit. You know what I mean? So, you know, talking a lot of shit, you might get shot in the process. So, I think that's what happened. Do you remember what you said? Nah, you know. I'm going to be honest. You want me to be honest? Of course. Yeah, be that's honest. why we have you here, man. I want to know the man yeah. behind the tweets. I, I wasn't talking shit. I, I used this, this dude. This dude tried to get me robbed uh-huh. about two years before that. I guess he didn't know that I wasn't that type of person. And what happened was every time I seen him, I attacked him. <laughs> <laughs> every With single what, time. what, your hands or what? Yeah, I'll punch him in his face. I'll see his girl and I'll, I'll squeeze his girl butt in front of him. And then I'll kiss him on his forehead. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would like really come up with the most creative. Just emasculate this be, man. Yeah, yeah. To be disrespectful to him for trying to rob me. Hold on, yeah. I want to hear some more and creative methods. You kissed yeah. him on the forehead. What, what, there is nothing what more. Think, what you think was the most disrespectful that you did? The most disrespectful thing I did was grab him and his girl's ass. God, <laughs> they was like kissing at the bus stop. They're kissing each other, and I grabbed both their asses at the same time. And I just, I wanted because what I, I feel like, you know, if you have an issue with somebody. And, you know, I think like the United States of America. Okay. You know, when they go to war, they cripple you from the inside out. Okay. okay. They, they attack your financial structure. Yeah. You know what I mean? The institutions immediately. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, if you have issues with somebody and somebody's going to do something to them, you attack their home first. So, like, if if you if I find out, like, you want to do something to me, I'll make sure I'll punch your wife in the face when I see her. Yeah, they're, they're, really, they're, they're really pissing them off. Because you got to think it. about it. If you has got to go if, home to that if, every if, if single night. If the wife night. comes home and says, Yo, tax punch me in the tax face. Tax punch me in the face. You, you have to, an issue at home. Yeah. You, gotta tell you don't wife, just have an issue with me. And you got to yeah. tell your wife, I can't do nothing about that. Yeah. Tax is crazy. I so can't you have to explain do. that to your wife now. Now your wife it says, I got punched in the face. What are you going to do about this? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not so gonna go play this guy divorce. who's fighting women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you get a yeah. divorce. You look like a pussy in front of you your wife. Look like a pussy in front of your you. wife. Wow. Exactly. So it's like it's a it's from an inside out. Let me so ask you this. No, Sun Tzu is my father. So what was his breaking point? I love Sun Tzu. All the war. So mm-hmm. what was his breaking point that made him? Oh, his breaking you? point. You know, it was crazy. It was like. It was like outside influence. Like we really wasn't going through it anymore. It was like two years later, and then um. I, some, some, oh, one of my friends seen the dude and I guess thought I still had issues with him. He yeah. was in jail and he beat the dude up. And so the dude was like going around telling people like, oh, why the tax send this dude to beat me up? And I, oh, I didn't send nobody to beat you up. And I see the dude and I was like, yo, I run up on him. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? We arguing. And he said something slick and then I spit on him. And it's great disrespect. I spit on him. Then the next day I seen him and I went to smack him again and he had a gun. I, sm- I smacked him from behind. He didn't know it was me. And then I put him in a sleeper. And while he had me in a sleeper, that's when he shot me. So that's the reason I, I like actually lived because he didn't see. So he had the gun like this. Yeah. So I went this way and came out here. So it, probably if he turned around, I'd have been dead because it would have went straight yeah. through my head. So was you, you in a coma or anything? No. I actually left the hospital like two days later. I le- yeah, I left the hospital like two days later because I was like, all I could think about at the time was like, what would Tupac do? And I'm like, Tupac would leave this hospital and try to go get them. And he would shoot a video right after. <laughs> so I was like, fuck that. You know what I mean? I'm like, fuck that. We going out. We going to get this motherfucker. So I came out the hospital. And I remember the doctor was like, yo, you should walk around the hospital to see if you got your strength back. Because I know that you're weak from the blood loss. And I'm like, no, I'm good. And call me weak again, yeah, doc. Yeah, <laughs> Fuck out of here. You know what I mean? And then... And I was arrested after I got shot, by the way, you know what, what? I mean? Because they, they they said I allegedly shot three other people in the building. But I don't know what that was about. But anyway, <laughs> I get the central bookings. Uh-huh. I get the central bookings, and I'm standing there. And I remember I was talking to somebody, and they like, yo, man, what happened to your head? And I'm like, yo, I got shot. And they like, you got shot? Man, you ain't get shot. And, I, and that was the last word. I collapsed. And I woke up in the hospital again. Again. <laughs> because I shouldn't have left the hospital. You know what I mean? So, you know. Question. Do you think that, like, when you're, I don't want to say the word crazy, but when you're willing to do anything, mm-hmm. you find people treat you differently? Yeah. What? How do people treat you? You find people are honest with you? I don't think it's nothing wrong with the word crazy. It's like no, Tupac and Juice. No, no, no. But here's the thing. No, no, but here's the thing, because Dave Chappelle had a good crazy point about crazy. Because really cra- crazy is not knowing what you're doing. You know what I you're know doing. exactly yeah. what I'm you're doing. You're just willing to go further than I'm most people are. I'm just willing to go further than most people. That's so. why I always say, don't fuck with people if you don't give a fuck less than they do. Exactly. Yeah, you gotta give less. So that's why I be <laughs> arguing with people and I be like, you got three kids, leave me alone. I'll meet you at the daycare. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, 
I don't have three kids. Where you gonna meet me? <laughs> so listen, the Riverside, guy, motherfucker. So, so the guy after you after you got out of uh, the hospital and got your strength back, did you go seek revenge on the dude? Or? I actually did, man. And yo, man, I never seen him again. He was like, out. He was, yeah, this dude. It, it was funny because you know everybody in the neighborhood knew our issues yeah. through Brooklyn, so people knew that you know I wasn't afraid of the dude. But it was like he like basically, I think by him hiding so much, he made me more of a, a, that image that people don't want to mess with me because it was like increase yo, your mythology and disappeared. He didn't want to deal with yeah. me, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was like he kind of helped me out. Are you willing, and this, I always ask people this, are people willing to accept their own karma? Because you know you have been oh, fucking with the hell dude. hell yeah. Then the dude shot you. No, I, you I wasn't. You at that. Yeah. I definitely knew what he did. He did exactly what he's supposed to do. Gotcha. He actually should have shot me a couple years before that. When you grabbed the butts. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I expected to get shot back then. So, you know what I mean? When he did it, I was like, I wasn't shocked. But it was like, you know, he called me. I was in the hospital. He was like, oh, I didn't know it was you. I'm sorry. And all I could do was laugh. And I think that was the main reason I was trying to get out. Like, how dare you try to apologize to me? Because I'm blind on my left eye to this day. I can't see out my left eye. So it's like, when he said it, I was like, what? Motherfucker, I'm blind. Fuck you mean? But for people, who are, <laughs> for people who are listening right now, your left eye doesn't look like a glass eye or anything. Yeah, like yeah, it no, looks as if you yeah. can see. Nobody knows unless yeah, I tell the them. Yeah. Yeah. Until I bump into you with some shit. Like, and that could just look like a goon bumping into people when yeah. it's not even like, that. You just it'll, can't it'll, see. It'll, it'll wander some <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. A girl be like, oh, you're fucked up. I'll be like, all right, well, cool. <laughs> you should say your, your big ass titties did that to my eye. <laughs> the reason I ask that question about comments is because like, I'm the type of person, like, when certain shit happened to me, no, if I'll be like, all right, I deserve that. Exactly. There ain't no need for me oh, to I definitely know what I deserve. Like what? Going. Like what happened to me? I got punched in my head the other life. day. I deserved girl. it. You got punched in the other yeah, day. You worried about dying, bro? Look. Oh, I see the little he scar. He punched the shit out. That's me. how I got this scar. I got like, this shit. Like he like punched the shit out. Me. You were, you he were punched about... me so hard. I was thinking about it a week. Like, well, it is weeks later. Like two weeks. I was thinking about it yesterday. I was like, yo, this dude, like, he really punched the in shit Brooklyn? out of me. No, it was at a show. Um, Naima Supreme was performing at a show. One time for Naima. And I was, I was taping. I was trying to tape on the side of the show. Now, what happened was when I first got in the show, yeah. Manolo Rose was performing. And run, Ricky, run. Run, Ricky, run. And they was trying to, and like, I guess I gave him a, a five and I hit a female. I didn't mean to. So they pushed me. And when I turned around, it was a whole bunch of dykes. So I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. And it, I literally was like in the middle of a circle of five dykes pushing me like, what are you doing? And I just was like this. And I didn't want to hit them because I'm not, I'm not going to hit these girls, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted people to see first that they was attacking me. Like, please let these people see they're attacking me before I start pushing these women. But then somebody came and broke it up. Um, Ten minutes later, Naima was performing. I was trying to get a shot of her on stage. And somebody smacks the shit out me in the back of my head. So I turn around and it's a manly looking girl. So I see it and I'm like, I turn around I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like, the dykes really just want to attack me tonight. Yeah. So I thought it was like attack on me. So I pushed her, and I didn't know how hard I pushed her. She like literally flew off the stage. And soon as I did that, somebody jumped on the stage wow. and knocked me the Another fuck out. Lesbian? No, a dude. It was her husband. What? Come to find out, like the dude is a friend of my friend. He knew exactly who I was. She knew me. Yeah. She was trying to tell me like, oh, it's me. Like not like trying to attack oh, me. Yeah. I pushed the wrong female. The female next to her was the one that smacked me in the back of my head. Yeah, yeah. So I, it was like a whole you misunderstanding. Blame the guy for doing that? Hell no. I pushed his wife. Exactly. He did yeah. exactly what he was supposed to do. So that's when that's a, that's a, that's a moment where you let, put a period at the end of karma. Exactly. Like you don't like feel like I, you have to. You owe nah, him anything. No, nah, I, don't, I don't say we could actually go eat and drink. He did what he's supposed to do. Actually, we might have had an issue if he didn't do anything right. for me pushing his wife. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So I respected it. Like, I don't, I don't feel no sort of way. That'd be funny if you beat up a guy for not beating <laughs> you up for beating up his wife. Yeah, how dare you not help your wife? <laughs> I am that type of person. I can tell people. I can, You're just going to let me choke your wife out like that? Yeah, and like, I do nothing? Yeah, for I, real. I can tell people who do a lot of dirt, though, because, like, you're very observant when people walk in the room. You're looking like who that? Mm -hmm. You got the through the door. You Jason around, Bourne you know type of shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know the the environment. Like I talk a lot of shit, and it, I, I don't mind speaking my opinion on certain things. I think that's why a lot of people check for my opinion because they know like I'll shit on my friend. Like I'll be like, my, you have to chill. You're whack. Your music is whack, or your acting skills need to sharpen up. Like I feel that's what real friends do. Like, I agree. That's all I want. That's I, all, when I'm slipping, like as my friend, I want you to grab me and say, "You slipping, yeah, motherfucker." Word. Don't. Wait for the NYPD to tell you, me I'm slipping. But you think that people are worried, to be honest with you, because of repercussions? I do think that sometimes. and But that's why I try to be like, I I try to be 
so much more honest to bring it out of them. And you respect their honesty. You won't be yeah. angry at their I'm honesty. Not, I'm never that type of person because I can't. How how dare me criticize people all day and not get criticized for something I do? If you point something out wrong that I do, please tell me. I, I I'm a I'm a lover of knowledge. I love knowledge. So I love learning. If you know that I'm doing something wrong, you could teach me better. Teach me. See, I, I agree with what you said. It's not because I think you a bitch ass motherfucker. Mm -hmm. If you constantly critique people all day like I do, like mm -hmm. you do, and then somebody come at me, Sean, man, you bleaching your skin, and then I get upset. Yeah, like motherfucker, who cares? Like you yeah. gotta let other people have their opinion too. The people will respect your opinion that much more. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, t I feel like people tend to gravitate to those who don't give uh, validation easily. Oh yeah, they want it. They want it even more. They want your validation. It's like if you're a whore, people don't want to fuck you as bad. But if you're the virgin, everybody's like, yo, I want to be the first one who gets that. Yeah, and yeah, I feel yeah. like that's what happens a lot of time with you and maybe possibly in your life. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, rappers go, shit, if Charlamagne co-signs this shit, I must be hot. Yeah, I'd be sitting mm -hmm. back sometimes like, why do you give a fuck if I like your shit? Because it yeah. means that you're not giving pussy to everybody. You're giving pussy to I select pussy few. To nobody. I, I mean, pussy. Wale. Wale. You love Wale. <laughs> Dope. Exactly. I think Wale is dope push. too, I man. Dope. As much as I joke on him, because the thing is that I joke on a lot of artists, and I, I think they take it like all the way serious. And they'd yeah, be like, yeah, "Motherfucker, yeah. I loved your album. Why did you block me? Word. I bought that <laughs> shit. I was fucking joking. Like it was a joke. You like know, you know what I learned? Like Nipsey like, Hussle blocked me. I, I really took that personal because I really liked this I dude album, Nipsey, and that was like my first time ever listening the hundred dollar album. Really listening to him. So when I let I'm I'm like, motherfucker, you blocked me. I love your fucking album, motherfucker. Nah, I was like, because <laughs> you, you would troll him. On yeah, the I, internet I, nah, I was joking on him. I, just, I said when he first put out said it, the CD was a hundred dollars. I, I said a joke about it, and I was blocked immediately. They're sensitive, man. Yeah, I, mean, very, I, said, I started fucking with Nipsey when he had the bullets and got no name CD, but they're very sensitive. In it. And, and Wendy Williams gave me the best piece of advice. She said, you either going to be of the people or of the industry. Mm. Because when you're of the people, you're going to talk like how we talk. Freely. Exactly. You're give your freely. honest opinion about yeah. music, give your honest opinion about movies, whatever. Mm -hmm. Not give a shit. When you're of the industry, you ain't going to really give your honest opinion because you're going to want to get invited to the album release party. Exactly. You're going to want them to follow you on Twitter. Yep. You're going to want them to let you into their shows. All that bullshit. You could go to the parties or throw the parties. The and people is who run the show, though, man. Exactly. And they don't understand the people, that. People, that's the power right there. They don't, I had a conversation with a dude the other day because like, I was like one of the first people like going hard for, for Bobby Schmurter, Hot Nigga song. And like so many people, like it was so much discretion. You know, the super hip hop lovers, that's not hip hop. And he's dancing and it's a yeah. freestyle and it's this. And I'm like, I love hip hop too. Like, I don't even listen to half these dudes that's rapping today. Like, yeah. I still have Big's album, like, to this day right. in rotation. Like, yeah. but when I promote this type of music, they come at me like, how dare you when Scott LaRock and and it's like no when J Cole's out here saving hip hop yeah you know and I love J Cole I, I like J Cole album. I like J Cole too I feel his shit is fire but it's like I am not going to fuck and take a bitch to the club to go listen to, to J, J Cole, Cole. No, I got J Cole in the car when no, I'm driving we, and I'm taking Ray Schmerman in the motherfucking exactly club. hell yeah exactly that is what yeah J Cole could fuck up some pussy for you he'll fuck some pussy he up for you he'll fuck some pussy up for himself he, he rides, a, he'll ri he rides a bike to the studio J Cole can't get pussy right now J Cole, I, I agree with that like, I'm, I'm looking at Instagram uh, yesterday and I see Nas Shout out the Ray Schmermer album, Shrem Life. Shrem 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 whatever. Yeah. I, I know. Anything with but the S. They like mad at Nas. Like, yo, you supposed to be hip hop. Yeah. Like, you I can read. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and they did it to Q Tip when Q Tip said something about the Migos. They was like, Q Tip, how dare you? And I'm like, Ugh. what? A, the Migos is Slick Rick. Like, they're the same thing. Whole bunch of jury, Gordy, you know what I mean? But they act like you can't have balance. Yeah. Like, I can't like both. I can't if like so like You like it, dude. It's like food. I don't give a fuck if it yeah, comes exactly. from a goddamn truck in the street. If it's delicious, it's I'm going to get the delicious. fucking food, bro. Yeah. It's, it's the a, music is good. We're going to listen to music. I agree. It's a regional thing, though, because I, I grew up in South Carolina amongst corner population yeah. less than 8,000, right? So we didn't have no musical identity back then. Like, mm -hmm. we didn't have a, like, how Brooklyn got Biggie, Jay. Yeah. You know, we didn't have no rappers back then growing up. I mean, of course, we got rappers now, but back then, we used to listen to everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I used to listen to West Coast. I used to listen to Down South, New York. And this shit, is and what I, flack for this it. is what I explained to a couple of my friends the other day because they all was going in on this, oh, where did this word fleet come from and this? And I'm like, do you not understand that we're in the information era? Yeah. That if, if, 
if this was 20 years ago yeah. and somebody said bout it, bout it on Twitter, yeah. and, and let's say in 1994, we would have knew about it that day in 1994 and not 1996 when Master P decided to say Word it. Up. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So that's why a girl or a, a white girl from Wisconsin could say fleek and then we say, oh, I like that word. And now yeah. the person in New York could be saying it tomorrow. But, it but, no, but you know what that no shit boundaries. is about? That shit is about when we're getting old. Mm-hmm. And we don't know the slang, and then we start we stop feeling cool, <laughs> right? We go, yo, what the fuck are these words that I don't fucking know anymore? Yeah. Like I remember when Fleet came out, I remember a couple words, and I stopped knowing what the fucking words were, and I started hating. I was like, man, these kids make stupid ass fucking words. But mm-hmm. all I'm really saying is, man, I'm not cool anymore. Yeah. I mean, the fuck? You, no, you know you be mad because you didn't. You wasn't the first group to, to know say about this shit. Yeah, say it. why am I so late? Like, be offended. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying right to learn now. the whip dance like, and shit. What the fuck? Like is right it? now, everybody mainstream America they using thought. Mm-hmm. Mainstream America, they using basic. Like, yo, you saying that shit four years ago? Yeah. A whole trill. bunch of stuff. Like, Trill was so old. Yeah, Trill is like, shit. Like, Trill was Boosie and Webby but back in the early 2000s. That's a good point. It was like, back in the day, when you were on on top of slang and on top of these words, you felt cool because it was insulated. And just like you said, now with Twitter and the internet, it's not insulated it's anymore. It's oversaturated. The second, the, the second word it happens. Comes in, it's no longer yours or ours or communities. It's the fucking internet. Well, it's you watch everybody. the news. If you watch CNN right now. They're saying thought, if, fleek, all this no, shit. If you watch CNN right now, it was a shooting early to happen in France. Mm-hmm. Two rogue shooters. You know all yeah, the shootings. Yeah. yeah. You like, <laughs> But if you watch CNN right now. <laughs> this guy knows every shooting that happened. You got to know the shootings, man. Free Bobby Schmurder, GS9. <laughs> it took seven uh, people out of Croatia. You, I know You got to know. In CNN, right? If. I will find out on Twitter first that that shooting happened before I see it on CNN. Yo, Duval, but, Duval was telling us the other day, he's like, Twitter right now has become news. It's CNN. It's, it's not, always it's, been that. No, first of all, Duval make me sick when he say that because he's late as a motherfucker. Twitter's always been news. First, yeah. No, this is you and him going it's back and forth. It's always been an update of whatever you're doing. What's going on? No, it has been an update, but back in the day, before Instagram, before there was pictures and that kind of shit, it was, hey, what's up? Hey, I'm doing fucking no, toothbrush. It. I, see the video, was, look, no, I see the video of the shooting this morning. Two hours before CNN put it up. All I watch is CNN. I don't watch nothing but, but CNN you know and why? Twitter. Because yeah. that's people in real time at the scene like, exactly. oh, shit, look what's going on. Yeah. But it, it's the same thing as I say with the slang. Yeah. So when the girl says, fleek on Vine, that fast. Done. Fleek is in New Orleans, California, Done. Croatia, yeah. Greenland. Yeah. It's, it's everywhere, so... The news can't even So keep stop up. being upset that your slang is getting out there because you can't do anything about it. You can't it. do shit about you it, You should man. be happy. Yeah. I guess you just can't get no credit for it. You can't get no credit That's for it. You truth. can't get paid for it. Yeah. Like I seen a girl getting mad on Twitter one day about somebody. I think she said Drake was doing the Bay music and stuff like that. I was like, "That's everybody's music now." Like, the music is like it's like it's like New York dude saying, "Oh, New York gotta come back." How the fuck New York gonna come back? Down south is mad fucking states, nigga. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, New York is one state. People people think New York got more than twelve million no, people. This is the it problem. Doesn't. New York is <laughs> one. St- and then when you talk about New York, you're talking about five boroughs. You're not even talking about Buffalo. Hello, yeah. Rochester, Syracuse, yeah. Yo, but how Albany. About New, how about New York never left? New yeah. York ain't never left. You know what the problem is? People don't like the sound that New York has evolved into. They and, mad at Manolo Rose. Mm-hmm. They mad at Bobby Schmurder. But who they are these people? They mad at Troy Ave. They I mad think, at ASAP Rocky. They mad at French. It's a different sound now. But I think and these ain't that 90s boom bap. You but know who? what it is? But who is it? It's, 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 it's the internet once again. Because just like it's, just like you said, how you grew up in the South and you, you only listen to certain rappers, as only certain rappers was out. Yeah. But now, who am I? How am I going to tell my little brother that Chief Keith isn't dope? Because that's, that's all what he, he listens, listens to. to. Yeah. How am I going to tell him that? How am I not going to tell him he can't say certain words from Chicago? Because that's him. He wakes up in the morning. He puts on YouTube. He is in Chicago and. Chief Keef living room. Yeah, that's his breast milk. You can't tell somebody their breast milk doesn't taste delicious. That's, that's like you know. telling me that Biggie wasn't the best rapper at one point. Like, I'd be wanting to fight people, but it's like, I can't yeah. fight this kid for telling me Lil Wayne is is better. You know what I mean? Nah, I'm not agreeing with that at all. I mean, I like Lil Wayne. I grew up on Lil Wayne, but he's not better than Big. Oh, it, no. Not, no. Uh, certain but that's their opinion. But no, that's their opinion. How but could com- you tell them that when they, when, they, when, when they first spark of intelligence in their life of comprehension Dude. and they heard Carter three? I'm with you. But no, I think. Listen, yeah. I do not want to have an argument with a 19-year-old about Big being better than Wayne if you've never listened to Big. Yeah, yeah, Even if, if they listen, listen, though, if you've it's listened, dated to them. It's like it's like with Richard Pryor, right? We were actually having this conversation la- mm. last night about Pryor. I grew up, I grew up right? I'm 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 a stand up so I, I loved Eddie because that was my that was my chief keep that was my first person yeah. that I grew up listening so by the time I listened to Pryor and watched Pryor I had already seen it yeah. mm-hmm. do you know what I'm saying I had seen so many people copy Pryor that Pryor 
look like a copy to me. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, mm-hmm. I'm not really feeling this guy, even though he's the one who started all this other shit. So I understand these kids who might listen to Migos or Chief Keep, they listen to Big, and they're like, I mean, I get it, but the beats are kind of whack. Think, I think mm-hmm. it's a generational thing, but I think greatness stands the test of time. And the reason I say that, I was at the airport two weeks ago, uh-huh. leaving Orlando. Mm-hmm. So this little dude, he on the phone with his man. He like, yo, I'm about to get the black Tims, you know what I'm saying? The black and the white Tims. Dude on the phone like, man, white Tims is corny. He said, man, you corny. Then the little dude, he's like 18, he starts spitting a big L verse. Uh-oh. So the dude on the phone goes, what the fuck is you rapping? He goes, that's big L. He goes, ah, oh, big L whack. Dude goes, man, you whack. <laughs> he, said, he said, yo, I know who you like. You like Exhibit. Oh, pimp my ride ass nigga. <laughs> this dude like 17, 18. <laughs> So that lets me know greatness stands the test but of you, time. But you know, it, it also comes from a level of intellect. That's you know, true. you know, back then uh, it was it was kind of fly to be smart. It was, and it even was, some of the dudes was gangster back then. But even some of the dudes that thought they was intelligent back then wasn't intelligent. They just used and big words. Yeah. I, I realized that I had a lack of intelligence back then yeah, because yeah. I thought they was intelligent. <laughs> and when I listen back, and I'm like, you motherfucker. Yeah. You yeah, had me. Give me an example. Like who? You, I don't. <laughs> don't stop talking shit now, man. Right, don't, don't stop, stop talking, talking like, shit Wu-Tang now, Wu-Tang man. Wu Tang is too deep, man. I can't shoot no, 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 Wu Tang. No. I appreciate Wu Tang more now because back then I didn't, I wasn't studying five percent lessons. Mm-hmm. When I started studying five percent lessons, mm-hmm. I understood what they were saying. Oh yeah, like, definitely. See Cipher Divine, like. Whoa. But you don't feel like when you listen to Wu Tang, like I grew up on that. My mother was Earth. But here's the thing: like when I when <laughs> knowledge, I was knowledge, knowledge. I didn't listen to lots of Wu Tang, but I remember even verses that I loved. It felt like, okay, you just trying to put big words in here. Nah, I bomb atomically, Sophocles, philosophy. Like, you know that's the verse I was so. going to? That that of course it was. Sense, I loved it. That was one of the greatest Why did you of say that shit? Exactly. exactly. It's like, you could have said that shit way Yo, easier, dog. I want yeah. that I bomb atomically, Sophocles, philosophy. I want I bomb atomically on my tombstone. Mockery's philosophy. He bombs atomically. You literally just put in mockery and how many words was three syllables. And I loved this shit. No, I loved it. Yo, I still love it to this day. That's the greatest but way to start a one day. Show, I was up. sitting high as a giraffe's ass. I, I forgot what I was smoking, and I sat there and I said, "Why the fuck did he say this shit?" <laughs> no, so that's many perfect. years later. <laughs> no, listen. He said, "I bomb atomically." Mm-hmm. Socrates' philosoph- philosophies and high prophecies can't define, define how, how I be dropping these. these. Meaning, Lyrical. Socrates' philosophies yeah. or mm-hmm. any high prophecy can't define the shit that I be dropping. Man, I know what it meant. That shit is amazing. I know what it, it meant, was, but it was unnecessary. But still, no, it I was so no, mad. It was unnecessary. I said, yo, like, you so happy that you did okay in science class. Like, <laughs> that's why I was mad. I was like, so what? I, you know, I was kind of shitty in science until I realized all it was was reading and comprehension. But when I was like, you was just so happy that you was better in science than me. Like, Listen, and we were I sitting there listening to. Yeah, I know it. I want that on my tombstone. <laughs> that is ill. Let he, me ask you. He he bombed atomic. <laughs> what other bombs would you use? What other? <laughs> you know, I, I bomb, know. but not the atomic ones. The ones that's a little less powerful. Yeah. Of course, you're gonna use an atomic the best bomb. One. I, I nuclear yeah. bomb. I nuclear bomb. I bomb atomic. Thing. Look, it's a little extra. I that's pipe bomb. I'm I thought you was gonna say Keith Murray. And I like Keith Murray. I think he's Keith. dope. But Keith Murray definitely had a dictionary. I don't think Keith Murray went to school. No, nah, I don't think he went to school either. I don't think he went to school. I think he was. I think he was also. I think he was a product of the era of five percenters and 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 learning words and using them all the way out of context. Yeah, because he was like, y'all mythological niggas is comical. The astronomical is coming through like the flu bombing you. Like I didn't. I didn't understand. It. Yeah, yeah. I, and that was another was issue. That's a mythological nigga. Like, <laughs> this, this, did you, this did you fuck the bitches or did you not fuck? The I don't bitches? know when black people learned that astronomical word, but it was like two years straight. The motherfucker, every, everything was astronomical, man. I was like, yo, what the fuck? I said, did what? these niggas just discover NASA? I was pissed. Somebody got some pussy off of astronomical. Astronomical. And after that, like, everybody's like, yo, I need to put this in a verse. No yeah. words have been rhymed <laughs> together more than lyrical and miracle. Lyrical, and, miracle. And, and Hennessy and, and nicotine. And Hennessy. Tupac did it every time by <laughs> itself. I like Pac. You know, the Pac was so dope, and Pac, so many people could recognize Pac. And I didn't like Pac when he was alive. Me either. I hated Pac when he was alive. Yeah, actually. I appreciate it. He was so simple that anybody from anywhere could understand him. It wasn't over anybody's head ever. Yeah, he was a great communicator. Like, great communicator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He knew how to deliver. His oh, he letter. knew how to speak. He, he, he when he spoke, it, you listened. Turn yes, you listened. You wanted to hear Tupac talk. I had that Not when he was alive. I didn't fuck with Pac. Once he did that, no, hit him I didn't up and he did this Biggie and yeah. Mob Deep. But still, because I, I thought was I was bad on. boy at the time. Like me too. Man. You could. I, you, I didn't have silk shirts, but in my mind, I you did. Bad boy. I had seventy three silk shirts. When I was locked up, when I was locked up, I was locked up in the Berkeley County Detention Center one time. I think this is the first time I got locked up. I was writing down 
Bad Boys 1997 roster. And I had me and my dude, A. Rizzler, who's dead now, on the Bad on the Boy roster. roster. Like, we was going to get signed to Bad Boy. Dude, what else was you going to do besides Bad Boy back then? Bad Boy was hip hop. Like yeah, yeah. they would, they like almost define what hip hop is today. Bad Boy is yeah. Migos. Like yeah. that's who the Locks would have been. I heard some. I heard somebody said that the Locks was like the the Migos was the downside version the, of the Locks. Of the Locks, yeah. The yeah. And, and I, I laughed at it and said, "Hell, fucking no!" But then I was like, "Damn, maybe if they would have stayed with Bad Boy, they would have been interesting. They would have had ninety seven chains on." Silk shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't never took they took it back to the street because everybody started saying the shiny suits. Because people suits were saying was the corny. shiny suits, the suits, the, the streets pushed them. The street and you know, I always try to tell people like the streets don't love nobody, man. You can't be sitting here talking about what the street said. That's like the dude, like this kid the other day, he got jumped by these kids and he like tax, I'm going back out, I'm shooting them niggas tonight. So I said, all right, yo, check it. Yo, when I fuck your bitch next year. Cause you in jail. Cause you in jail, like He's, he's like, yo, what type of shit is that? And I'm like, think. the streets don't love you? Yeah. I said, you gonna go out there and shoot them because the streets said you pussy? I said, you better be strategic, motherfucker. I said, if you really want to shoot him, shoot him next year. If you don't feel like shooting him next year, you was never supposed to shoot him. Dude, Stop you know what? Uh, ways on how to shoot people. You no, test with shooting. I, like, if, <laughs> if, if GS9 would have listened to me, they wouldn't be in jail. <laughs> I believe. Oh, no, let's get back to that. Let's do the mirror. Do the mirror. <laughs> but real, real quick, you know, Damian Lemon. He said he said that you know, Damian Lemon is a comedian. He's on yeah. Geico. So he said a great thing. He's like he's like dudes will go broke trying to impress people that are broke. Yeah, man, and that's to that, that exact same thing. It's like you gonna go to jail trying to impress dudes that what are in jail already or are these streets is bro- you know no, what I mean? What is who are you trying that. to impress? Let's do the mirror, we talk about that. That's the, that's what we gonna pick up at. All right, man. All right, building a website can be tough, and even if you do know your way around, yeah, coding, I, yeah, but we're not. Well, okay, go go. And even if you do know your way around coding, uh, creating something that looks good and works good is a time consuming affair. But thing is, you probably need one anyway a business site, a portfolio, a restaurant, whatever else. Taxstone, well, you need a website, man. We need to make you a website. And all it nah, is. Tax me the podcast. All the murders and killings and stabbings that are happening in the world, yeah. you put in one central location. Yeah. And definitely. you. Because you know that it's happening Only before the it's happening. That people know yeah, that's about a fact. You could, if not, it's snitching. You, yeah, that's but true. you could charge I a premium. I don't retweet. I, don't, I didn't retweet those. Those those dudes pictures yesterday that, that shot the cops and they said they was wanted. I didn't retweet. I retweeted it once they found them. But yeah. you knew who they were. Already. <laughs> yo, yo, you can make so much money from the police or FBI if they just came to you. You were the informant. Oh shit! Think Hell about no. the amount of money. I'm informant. You know how fast I get killed. That's like, true. I don't want to. You know, I might not get killed. They don't kill snitches no more. Why not? They just take pictures of them on Instagram. They welcome them home. They buy them a car. Yeah, snitching, you can snitch. Snitching, snitching is, is cool now. It's not what it was in the 90s. In the 90s, it being, was dangerous being to called snitch a rat before. meant something. Yeah. yeah. Even now, the mob wives. Look at the mob wives now. The mob yeah. wives. They got TV like, shows. Based around, like, one of the mob wives just now sorry, with the new sorry. show. Yeah. She just got, uh-huh. um, her boyfriend got cut in his face. Yeah. And she put the picture of the guy that cut her boyfriend in the face on Instagram. Added TMZ under the pen. I said, you're a mob wife. What are you doing? Yeah, handle this. And I said, <laughs> why are you letting TV, TMZ handle your beef? She ain't a mob wife. It's, she's a TV star. Finish the ad. All right, we got to get back to this. Thing, but I think we're on to something with this website, man. I see a lot of sponsorships <laughs> coming in. We could get the first 48 to sponsor it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing these see? guys on next season of First 48, <laughs> brought to you with, by Tax Stone. <laughs> all right, ready? So, uh, all right, anyway, building a website could be tough. And uh, even if you do know your way around uh, coding, creating that look that looks good and works good is a time-consuming affair. But the thing is, you probably need one anyway, a business site, a portfolio, restaurant, whatever else it is. Lucky for you, we have Squarespace to build a beautiful website for you without breaking a sweat. Yeah, you probably haven't heard of it, but I'm sure you have because it's the Brilliant Idiots. Uh, those are the guys that designed the Brilliant Idiots site. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, so go to squarespace.com and check it out. You heard a lot about Squarespace already. Well, how about the all-new Squarespace? Squarespace 7 comes with a newly designed interface and 15 new templates, but so much more, too. Thinking about mm-hmm. Squarespace for work, it now integrates with Google Apps so you can connect it to your Gmail, Google Drive for cloud storage, Google Forms for surveys on your site, and more. And if you need extra polish, Squarespace is now partnered with Getty Images mm. so you can take care of all your stock images needs in the same place you manage your site. And if you need proof that Squarespace is so easy to use that even an idiot can design a website with it, then you need to look no further than thebrilliantidiots.com. Okay? That's right. We designed our website where you can get our t-shirts using Squarespace 
Uh, and not only was it easy to set up, it was easy to set up the merchandising, integrating credit cards, and all of that. It is a great system, and the templates look good. There's a lot of websites that I've noticed that people put up, and it looks like an old MySpace page. Or, it just looks mm -hmm. shitty. These templates actually look professional. So you get a professional site, you throw some pictures up there, you look good. And you can start a trial with no credit card required. Start building your website today. And when you go to Squarespace to sign up, make sure to use the offer code IDIOTS. That's IDIOTS to get 10% off and to show your support for our show and we thank Squarespace for uh, their support of our show mm -hmm. okay? Squarespace start here go anywhere everybody now back to the hood man I've been telling people forever <laughs> like why do we put so much stock and so show much love to a place that don't do nothing but suck the fucking life out of us yeah, I, have the, I have that discussion so many times like you know I feel like a lot of them listen to me because they know I was outside Word. so they I always sit there and I'd be like motherfucker what is wrong with you like why are you mad that 50 Cent won't come back to the hood for? Why? Why come back? Didn't he work to get out the hood? Like, you know, you in the hood because you have to be there, motherfucker. I'm selling drugs on this block because I have to. Not because I want Now to, when yeah. I get a job, am I to come back on the same corner that I was selling drugs on? No, motherfucker. I go to work and I come home. What do this they want no them to do? no longer the office. I don't know, and I always wondered that. Like, what do you want them to do? When Let's they say come they back came to the back hood, to the hood, do what you do, want them to sit I, with you and eat ice cream? Yeah, what the fuck? I, I think I think I think <laughs> share crack with you. Just what? Spend you know, like, some corn, time you know, together. The what the fuck? <laughs> it's not your Jay dad. Remember what Jay Z said in that rap? He was like, "Yo, I don't be in the projects all day." Talking about how I be in the projects all yeah. day. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't be in the project hallway. Hallway. Talking, talking about, about how I be in the projects all day. That sounds stupid to me. I remember seeing a video. And I know Fat Joe from the hood, but he was like, yo, I'll be in the hood. He's laying on the steps and shit. I'm like, yo, what is you proving? Yeah. Like, that was the stupidest shit to me in the early 2000s. Like, why are y'all trying to prove y'all still in the hood? But here's yeah. the question. How do you keep the people, like we were saying earlier, if you have the people, then you By don't need doing the industry. For the people. Yeah, but how do you keep the people if... When you get to a certain level, the hood leaves you. If those people go, you know what, fuck they this guy. They're going to do that regardless. I had a, the, Are they? Because yeah, I feel like a, they stay with Jay. Nah, they they stay regardless. with certain people. You're going to lose some. Joe Button, for instance, right? He he speaks to all his fans. So when a Joe Button show comes up, Joe Button gets no radio play. But when yeah. a Joe Button show comes Pat. up, it's packed. You know why? Because they feel like they're going to support their friend. They people. Yeah, yeah, They yeah, peoples yeah. instead of just a rapper. They feel obligated I'm gonna be to honest, buy that ticket. I don't ticket. know if Joe Budden's a good example because he still got one foot in the hood for real. Like, it, like Joe career could go right back. To oh yeah, of course. Like, Who's a if, if you watch him, he's been at a steady pace as far as the internet goes, as far as keeping him eating. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. I fuck with Button. Button's definitely put it like this. A lot of things that people are doing now, like J. Cole and all them, mm -hmm. Button been doing. Yeah. yeah. Been doing Independently it. too. I yeah, feel like he's got an as impressive. As far as just going out there and shaking everybody's hand, kissing all the babies, button. I had that discussion it. with somebody because somebody was asking me like, "Yo, why when you say a record is dope, they all listen?" I said because I'm them and I speak to them. The rest of y'all is looking at them like, "Oh, they don't exist." I or, people won't respond to certain people on Twitter because they got forty followers, and I respond to them. I'll speak to him. I talk to everybody. I don't care. Yeah, I you know it. what I mean? If As long as you enlightening or you got something sharp to say, I fall in love with minds. I don't even know what half the dudes look like that I follow on Twitter because I like their personality. I like the way they think. I didn't yeah. follow you because you was cute, nigga. Fuck you, me. How you going to walk up on me? <laughs> How you going to walk up on me and talk about, oh, I'm, I'm such and such and such, like looking at me like you mad because I didn't acknowledge you. I'm like, oh, right, yeah. nice to meet you, motherfucker. Yeah. I didn't look at your AV. Yeah. Say that smart you shit you were saying. Shit. <laughs> like me, like, and, I, and I respected it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you can tell people who've been outside. He's like, posing like it's yeah. for you. You don't remember this? Yeah, like, you don't know me. Like, but no, you can, you actually, can, I don't. You can tell people who've really been outside. Like, I started following text. I just thought the motherfucker was interesting. He's funny. I can That's tell he really said. was Before outside. you came in here, he was like, yo, he's a funny-ass dude on Twitter. This <laughs> motherfucker's funny. Bring him on the fucking podcast. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think that's how you you give back to the hood. Because people that's from the hood mm -hmm. can see other people that's from the hood who got the same type of talents or whatever and be like, yo, sh at least showcase them. That's yeah. the least you can do. Because mm -hmm. I ain't go to college. You know what I'm saying? Only reason I got a motherfucking shot is because somebody gave me one. I wish I'd went to college. I regret that shit so much. You can man. still go. It's I know. There. I wanted the college experience. I wanted the dorm rooms. You know, oh, I used the to frat parties. Like college. I really wanted that experience. I know I could go you to college still right fuck. now. You can do that now. You know what I mean? Go fuck yeah. girls if you want to party and get high. I was thinking about going to sell crack on a campus, but I said, man, 
They're going to give me so many years. Nah, prescription pills. Nah, you're prescription not going to be able to sell that you crack. You need to sell pills. that. Yeah, you need pills. pills. You need That's some the Molly. Yeah, Oxycontin and yeah. all that good shit like that. Yeah, fuck drugs, man. I don't want to sell drugs no more because guess what? I don't want to go to jail. What'd you used to I sell? I don't, man. I used to sell everything. It's oh. nothing I ain't sell. I sold ass. I sold everything. <laughs> not my ass, but you know, I sold crack you and ass crack. got to clarify that shit very quickly. When the first time you sold crack? Um, Like who was the first person to put a pack in your hand? The first person? Um... Damn, who was it? I think it was an older cousin. For me, it was my dude. The same guy I was talking about, A. Rizzler. He's dead now. He yeah. put a, gave me a $100 slab. We used to call them slabs down south. Yeah, and slab, It was, it was a gram, and you're supposed to get, uh, what is it, $100 for a gram? $100 each gram? I don't remember. I just Shit, damn there, Whatever. yeah. No, it was two grams. You pay $100, and you get two grams, and mm-hmm. you're supposed to make a, uh, $20 off each gram or some shit like that. I don't fucking remember. But I'm supposed to make $20 back off the two grams, mm-hmm. basically. So you know it was worse. 20. You know it was worse than selling crack. Selling ass crack. Pimping is pimping. It was hard to fucking. Wait a minute. You used to, no, you used to. It pimp. wasn't hard. It was easy. Yeah. How many girls did you have? I actually, I started off as a pimp with five girls. Okay, so how do you convince these girls? I'm fascinated by this shit. They was my age. I was in seventh grade. I was pimping <laughs> girls. It was in seventh grade. Did they have hair on their pussy? <laughs> yeah, some of them did. No, seriously. And who was fucking them? Older guys or yeah. kids in the school? Old, older guys. How old? Old men. Forty they were something, seven year olds. I, they didn't seventh know, grade, seventh so, grade. No, seventh grade. Seventh grade. grade. About thirteen. Thirteen. God no, it's, damn. It's, it's, it's tr- That's true. high school. You, you got you, high school. Middle school. I was in seventh grade. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not thirteen in seventh grade. You're thirteen in high school. No, you're about thirteen. You eleven in seventh 12, grade. I was twelve, in, and I never got left back. And I was twelve in. in because think about it, you're 18 when you graduate high school, right? So 13, you're supposed, 14, you're supposed to 15, go 16. shoot all of these old men right now because they was fucking no, little No, you know, it, when, I, when I think about it, when I think about it as I got older and I realized, like, it wasn't even when I got older. I was still young when yeah. I realized it was wrong. Like, everything about it, you know what I mean? Just from the manipulation. I don't like manipulation. I feel like manipulation is rape of the mind, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like if you lie to me consistently, you manipulate me, you're trying to rape my mind. Yeah. So I, And that's what you got to do to a lot of the girls, but edit. For, for the girls my age, I didn't have to do it. They was just like with it. They was just naturally freak girls that we was in school having sex with. And I'm like, yeah, y'all want to get some money? And they had misguided parents and they didn't care. They and was I, already sucking thing, dick. I, yeah, I they understand. was already sucking dick. I put them on the track. It was so crazy because this is like how I got known in my neighborhood because I was only 13 years old with hoes on the track. And to have five hoes on the track is like, a NBA contract. Yeah, so they I talk, didn't know. They talk about you know, like, yo, yo, go get taxed. Like, all the young got pussy. five hoes. Like, we got to <laughs> yeah. kill him. So when I start finding out people want to kill me for having five hoes and they got two or one, and then I had like two white girls and two very, very light skinned girls. You know, in the hood, it don't matter if you're white and you're 700 pounds, you're white. You just yeah, 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 yeah. counted a white girl, so it's yeah. like, she's white. Yeah. The 700 pound white girl leaves with way more money than 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 to hear. I wanna fuck that snow bunny. I wanna fuck that Nubian white queen. Exactly. How much you was charging for this young person? Um at the time it was hundred and fifty dollars, fifty dollars for head. God damn it was fifty for head and a hundred and fifty dollars to fuck. How much 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 would you get? I was getting everything actually because most of them didn't even have any place to live. So they lived with me for free. I most I'll get them with outfits and I fed them. And did you live with your parents at the time? No. I left home. I was getting too much money. You know what happened was that I started being bad in school. And when Mind I started you being, in seventh grade. I'm in seventh grade. Okay. I was start, I started being bad in school and my mother was like, my mother was always spoiled me. And then she was like, I'm not buying you stuff no more. You being bad. But the, what it was was I was too far ahead. I knew multiplication in like kindergarten. You weren't you know being I mean? challenged or shit. So yeah, when yeah. I was in school, it was hard for me to pay attention because I would breeze through my work. Yeah, yeah. So I would just end up starting trouble because I was I was bored. You're bored. Yeah. yeah. So what happened? I started getting in trouble in school, and then I wanted to keep up with my outfits and stuff. So that's how I ended up pimping and and selling crack and all. And this was 12, 13 years old. You know what I mean? And you moved out. Where'd you move? I I'm, I actually I, I had a fiend. The fiend was the fiend had to go to an old folks home. I took the fiend apartment over in Bayview Projects. I had a three bedroom apartment, and I was living there with, with all five of my hoes and one other dude. And then I kicked him out because he was dirty. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and smelling ketchup. That's a that's not Hold a smell. You, you the smell. one you you pimping young hoes, but he's the dirty one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was I was a uh, uh, man. Hoes are clean, believe it or not. It's the other girls you gotta worry about. Hoes hoes want suck your dick with a condom on. You meet a girl right now at the club, she ain't gonna tell you put a condom on your that's dick. That's very suck true. Yeah. That guy, like, a hoe is gonna say put a condom on your dick. You crackheads like, too, and be scared of her when she tell you. 
But you ever fucked a crackhead? Several. Okay, because people look at me so weird when I say that shit. Like, if you ever sold crack and you was outside, you fucked, you a, fucked crackhead. a crackhead. They come with no. You money. had to be horny one day, and then yeah. she looked at you with them glassy eyes and tell you she's gonna suck your dick. You said, "Damn, she probably really gonna suck the shit out of my dick." She for ain't $10. have no money. You let her suck. Give me some. Yeah, head. hell yeah. A crackhead yeah. tried to suck my dick. Yeah, recently. guys. I ran. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know what's so funny, you man? Hell no! You know, I that. You know what's so funny? I know it's gonna come a point in this conversation where I'm gonna want to ask Tax when did he turn his life around? But you ain't really turned your life around. Yet. No, my life is turned around. You know, it is, and it ain't. See what I'm saying? He's not pimping it's, seventh graders. No, his life is fucking no, turned around. I'm, I'm, and mind no. you, you was in seventh grade at the time, so it yes. wasn't like you was doing some illegal pedophile. No, shit. it was. That's what, and no, it was crazy were because fucking were. that was my mindset. Like yeah. I'm like, they was these dudes was. The dudes that I, I, I was on the track with was really on CNN. Like, they caught a big case. And I always thought, like, if I got arrested, what the fuck was they going to charge me with? Because yeah. there wasn't, it's not even a prostitution charge in New York. Really? You can get a solicit and a prostitute charge, but there's no you charge can, for prostitution. So you can sell pussy, you just can't buy pussy. You, you can sell pussy, you can't sell pussy. They're going to still arrest you, but they're going to give you another charge. Got you. Why? Why? They don't have a charge for selling pussy in New York City. So technically, it's not illegal to sell pussy, no. but they could charge you with loitering or some mm -hmm. other bullshit. Exactly. Yeah, loitering yeah. is what you. Loitering is a charge that the girls are. That's how they got. get you in Vegas. Yeah, loitering completely. You know, you you buy pussy. I, I mean, love buying a pussy. pussy purchaser. Yeah, that's what happened to Wax one time <laughs> in Vegas. I told you about that. What happened? He was downstairs in the fucking lobby. His dumb ass thinks the girl actually likes, likes him. him. <laughs> So he's talking to the girl, and they, you know, they chatting it up. He's like, let's go back to the room. They come back to the room. They opening up the mini bar, buying drinks. And she's like, yo, I just want you to know before we go any further, it's going to be 350 He's like, 350 For what? For what? He was like, for some pussy. And he was like, oh, shit, you a prostitute. I thought you was here because you like my fucking abs or some mm -hmm. shit like that. Nah, ain't no bitch. Never, no Ego. fucking female ever liked a motherfucker in Vegas. Never. Never. Not no random ass chick walking no up on you. No female. My man was gambling like the in the, um, what is that, the Palms? No, 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 no. The Aria. Gambling in the Aria. Yeah. Yeah. Girl comes up to him, regular shit that you see on TV every fucking day. Comes up to him, chills with him, he falls asleep, wakes up with no jury. What? I'm like, you shouldn't even call me and told me about this. We're going to laugh at you for the rest of your life. You should have kept that to yourself. Because that's like, we see that every day on TV. Yeah, like, how you get yeah. got, bro? Yeah, how you get got. Now, listen, thought wanna, the girl I, liked him. We'll come back to your criminal past in a minute, but... Like now, you do break a lot of music on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I mean, Bobby, I think I might have even started watching the Bobby Smurda vid because you posted it. And same thing with Manolo Rose. It's like, it's two mm -hmm. people on Twitter who music taste I really What is your Twitter? Gold. Just so people know. Tax Stone, T A X S T O N E. So yeah. it's you you and Relly on Smash, I always check to see what y'all y'all into. Mm -hmm. Has anybody approached you to be kind of like an unofficial A&R? Because yes. I get that a lot from, from, from people. They want me to come. And all their projects helped them pick beats. Yeah, you, you know everything, shit. but I'm not. I'm not the type of person that's just gonna. I'm not gonna attach myself to anything. You lose your value. Yeah, like that. I'm not. You Once know you're I mean? paid for it, now I can't trust you uh, because a I'm real like, big exec asked me to to start like at a at a label party a couple weeks ago. He asked me to start tweeting about a certain rapper, and I was like, nah, you know, no, not if I ain't feeling him. Yeah, like he wanted me to gain a following in New York, and I was like, nah, man, because. He's whack. How would people ever trust me again? Exactly. You know what I mean? If I'm sitting there just doing this for yeah. it's a, mon it's a like, monetary you know, game. It's like Siskel and Ebert with the two thumbs up at the movies. Like if we found out people were movie companies were yeah. paying them to advertise the movies, yeah. now yeah, I can't trust I really thumbs. Yeah, because I really looked to Siskel yeah. and Ebert. Like, Where the thumbs at, yeah, Siskel? Like, yeah, Siskel <laughs> and Ebert said two thumbs, We out here. We going. Let's go. Yeah, so. <laughs> but that's why it's always good to give people your honest opinion. When they come yeah. to you with that type of shit, you be like, nah, send me the music. If I like the music, mm -hmm. you might see me talk about I've it. I've heard if you not, on the phone with it. people, and it's kind of funny how it is, like them trying to game you into doing it. Yes. And then it's funny, the way you handle this really well, because you're not disrespectful about it, but you're like, listen, I'm going to play it if it's good. That's it. That's it. They're like, yo, could yeah. you play it? What if it's good, I'm going to play it. Exactly. Like, what else do you want me to do? Yeah. My friend, I've been rallying for people on Twitter to like go to Facebook and tell my friend Easy Robinson, go, if, you, if you have a Facebook, please go. And his name is Easy Robinson, and go to his his Facebook and tell him to stop rapping because he's my friend. <laughs> I want him to stop. I'm and, like, and he probably don't believe you when you tell him that. And this is why I'm mad because I'm like, you're my friend. Why would you think I would be hating on you? Why would I hate on you? I love you. If you was this hot, is I, why I'm telling I you. I would love to tweet that you exactly. Shit. I help strangers out. Why won't I help you? Or it up. You know what I mean? What is I he didn't good know at? Bobby Schmurda when I started promoting his music. Yeah. I just knew everything he said. He was telling the truth, and I loved it. 
I said, he's telling the truth. He said he's been selling crack since the fifth grade. Because I know everybody on that block, they wouldn't even allow him to tell that, say that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when I call and I say, yo, who's Bobby Schmurder? And they say, man, Bobby Schmurder, man, is, is a dangerous kid. I said, all right, cool. Yeah, I knew that. I know, you know, I know his uncle. I, I know his uncle. You know yeah, what I mean? I so it's that. like, you know, if I believe in you. You know what's fucked up, though? You. When you start, like, right, you could be like, yo, talk about Bobby Schmurder, talk about Manola Rose. First thing, they'd be like, how much you getting paid? How much you getting paid? Yeah. Like, damn, I can't just be a That's genuine what lover Ebro, of music. Ebro bitch ass. Ebro bitch ass came at me on Twitter like, oh, you're mad because GS9 didn't pay you and some shit. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I genuinely did that. Cause I was a fucking fan. Like I really loved it. And I mean, the thing is, people, you gotta understand Brooklyn culture. Crips in Brooklyn dance. That's why it was like great to see him really on camera dancing yeah. and talking about he's gonna shoot somebody. Because it's true. <laughs> you go through those those blocks in the nineties, they will be out there two hundred and fifty deep dancing, eating jerk chicken, and you might get shot. You know what I mean? So I knew it was true. So I, I embraced it. I was like, yo, I love this kid. You know what I mean? So dudes was like, oh, you're mad because you didn't get paid. I was like, that was never my agenda. That's your job. You do you do that. You, your person is somebody's going to tell you, yo, I need your help with this. And you're going to say, oh, well, you got to do this for me. That's not me. I knew that I, I knew that I had the resources to get them put out there. And I just did it on my own. You know what I mean? The amount that someone would have to pay you to sway your opinion is never enough because they're basically paying for your authenticity. And yeah. then you feel like now a you're, bitch. Now you're you no like longer authentic mm-hmm. to people, or right? Not. So you got to pay me $20 million, $50 million because now I got to quit responding to music. Listen, can exactly. nobody you know ever tell you, Charlemagne, I paid Charlemagne for an opinion. Mm-hmm. I paid Charlemagne to say you like my record. None of that shit. If Except I like- for FanDuel.com, our next ad on this show. No, I'm just joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if, I fuck, if I fuck with you, I fuck with you. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I fuck with Tink now. Mm-hmm. Nah, Tink is, Tink is dope. I've been heard Tink music, you know what I mean? Because you know Naima and, and, and Tink was both working with Timbaland, you know what yeah. I mean? So I've I been heard Tink music. Tink, Tink is dope as shit. She's dope. And I, yep. I like her. I get excited when I hear new dope shit, especially early. Like, like I'm a fan at the end of the day. I always tell people that shit. Like, I'm mm-hmm. a fan. I'm a fan who just yeah. happens to be on the motherfucking radio. So I get to talk to these artists. Timbaland say, yo, come by the studio. I want you to hear something. I don't even be liking to fuck with artists on that level. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's Timberland. That's the OG. I grew up on this shit. I'm mm-hmm. gonna go hear what the fuck he got going on. Yeah. I heard all kind of new shit from home to everybody. To, yeah. to, 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 and now I'm hearing the tank shit. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Like, this chick is really amazing. Like, I heard moving that bass last year, I think. Word. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, I've been heard that. So here's a question How do you monetize that skill or that ability? You know, like I see how, what you've done. You've, 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 Managed to have an opinion about hip hop, which they've people, tried to take away. Which by they've the tried way. to take away. I've absolutely. had program directors early in my career tell me, Charlamagne, you got too much of an opinion. You're mm. not going to make it because you have too much of an opinion. I guess I'll just be in Monk's corner raising chickens then, because this shit ain't going to work. But for the me. people, the people fuck with you. Word up. So and what, that's what you, it's about? What do you want, man? What do you want to do? I want to do everything. Like you know, I'm. I want to speak. I'm a good speaker. I like to preach. Yeah. I'm like the old man. Like, I, like my family might walk out the room if I walk in because they like hear this motherfucker go. <laughs> yeah, because I'm about to tell everybody what they should have did. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or what the they Monday morning to do. quarterback or whatever. You know what I mean? That that's all it really is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I always been this way. I've been the same dude. I remember in seventh grade, my my science teacher, Mr. Lesher, he said. He said, um, my real name is Daryl. He said, Daryl, uh, you need to do radio. You got a radio voice. And I always remember hearing him say that in the background. I never thought about doing radio. And then later, later in my life, just speaking to people, people like, yo, man, you should do radio or some shit. And then he hit me one time and he said something about, yo, man, do the podcast shit. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Because Kid Fury also was like, he hit me. He's like, yo, man, you should do the podcast right. shit. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it out. You know what I mean? Chris, Tax needs a podcast, man. Yeah, this yeah. is the guy I talk to. Immediately, man. Chris, like tomorrow. Chris does the, this. Chris is the head of the loudspeaker network. Kid oh, Fury, shit. The Reed, Combat Jack, Brennan is, all oh, of yeah. is under I that shit. I fuck with all of them. So, yeah, yeah I'm because I'm just trying to think. It's like you're in a unique situation, and I think this happens a lot, this where it's my- like you have the people, right? The people are ob- obviously coming towards you. You need a voice, and you should be able to monetize this this ability to mm-hmm. kind of like uh, have the people's ear and do it in a way where they don't question your authenticity. And I think a podcast or some kind of speaking forum is good for that because if advertisers want to fuck with you, they can mm-hmm. fuck with you. If not... It's fine because you're yeah, gonna I keep like, talking like regardless, to and nobody and nobody can question your authenticity if you're being authentic. 
Yeah. yeah. I always tell people that when you keep up, when you front, you have to keep a front up. And that's very exhausting. hard. Exhausting. And it's exhausting. Uh, I just want to be myself. My father used to always say, when you tell one lie, you got to tell another lie. Exactly. Like, you tweeted something about me that was real one day. I, th- I don't know if it was the Fred Rose shit or the Can I Get a Drop shit. You was like, yeah, you can't be mad at Charlemagne. He's a civilian now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, a, I'm a civilian. Exactly. I ain't trying to do no street What shit. is Charlemagne going to do? Come outside with the OOP? <laughs> so he can say, you know, it's the next one after that, right? Because this is what the streets do. They push you. Oh, you pussy. You pussy. You pussy. You let him mush you. You let him do this. You let him do that. Then you come out with the ISIS AK, shoot everybody in the block, and then you a dickhead. Word. Oh, he's a fucking dick. Yeah, why you gotta shoot yo, everybody yo, on the He was on the I radio every morning, morning, yo. Y'all yeah, he, said I was pussy every fucking day. Yo, he was Y'all making made all me all do that shit. On the radio. He was on MTV and shit. Yeah. And he, he shot fucked his life up. Dumbass nigga. Yeah. That's that mind See, rape. So, you That's that mind rape you talking about. Exactly. It's like, it's, you can't win with them. It's no, I'm not gonna be sitting here trying to fight my life for you. Like, I've seen like, different rappers. They be calling other rappers like um, weirdos and shit. I don't, I don't call nobody weird. You know why? Because... You might just be being your motherfucking self. Who the fuck am I to call you weird because you don't dress like me? Yeah. No, if you dress like me, if you dress like you're a robber or some shit and you're not a robber, you are a weirdo. If you come in here with a fucking ski mask on and you have no intent on shooting anybody or robbing nobody, that's weird. you're a weirdo. If you pretend to be a gangster, <laughs> exactly. I think you're a weirdo. You're a weirdo. If you pretend to I be would, a drug dealer, I, hate with I people think you're a weirdo. Self. Like, yeah. I like you for being you, motherfucker. You like... You like um, backgammon and and fucking and polo, cool. I like Kush and, and bitches. You know what I mean. You know that's how you keep your brain alive, though, right? You keep your brain alive by being around people who have nothing in common with exactly. you. Exactly. That's how you, you learn. Yeah. That's why I keep telling you I have a love for knowledge. Word. That's why I love to meet people from different backgrounds and tell me about their shit. The, I, my my friend downstairs right now, he from West Virginia. He from the mountains. All he talk about is farming, and I'm sitting there just. Fascinated by this shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, "Oh, the, you know," he said, "the whole the whole city's gonna be ice. It's gonna be sliding the whole way. So what what I have to do is when I drive, I have to turn left so that I don't fall on the hill." I'm just sitting there fascinated by this shit because I don't know shit about living Yo, on listen, the fucking. Mouth. I had, so I, had true, I had one man. of the best time of my life <laughs> in West Virginia. Yo. Mm-hmm. I had to go down there for MTV to film that Buckwild shit, and I was down there with uh, Shane, rest in peace, Shane, my man Joey. Everything we ate, they either killed or grew. So we was eating bear shoulder, fresh yeah. squirrel yeah. dumpling. Your dick grow when you eat that type of shit. Man. You damn right. That's why the motherfucker so big, man. Fight you one of them motherfuckers lose, if you want you to. Lose your bitch to a country motherfucker. Fight one of them motherfuckers if you want to. Eating all this fresh shit. Yeah, I got into an argument with a white dude in the mall the other day, and I looked at his shins and I said, "Motherfucker, if you kick me, you beat the shit out of you." His shins was so big. It's like running <laughs> up on a so, UFC fighter. I was fighter. serious and joking at the same time. I made him laugh. I yeah. said, "Motherfucker, if you kick me." If you kick me it's with the big ass fucking legs, because you are what this you eat. So imagine shit. if you eating black bear. Yeah, exactly. You're strong as a motherfucker, dog. <laughs> That's why they're big as shit down south. Huh? Fight yeah. one of them motherfuckers if you want to. <laughs> That's why Shaq was created. If you want to, not even the big ones. The motherfucker has 100, 150 pounds. What you think they fed? Shit. What you think they fed? Um, Shaq, Shaq, great grandmother and grandfather. Word they up. breeded us like slaves. Word up. We gave us they the freshest shit. Him. They it's said, like he's a give, them the, give them the best food. These motherfuckers are strong. Word up. And they made NBA players and NFL players. <laughs> Michael Vick was born the next year. It was like, look what you motherfuckers did. Word up. Made a whole bunch of athletes. When the last time you, you, you got this fresh there? food? Yeah, I just was down there. I just came back. You got you got you selling crack down there? Nah, nah, nah. I ain't selling crack in West Virginia. <laughs> I, got, I got family in West Virginia. And I wouldn't say that anyway. I'm very smart. And I'm a, um, I have felonies, man. And you never want another felony, yeah. you know? <laughs> I got two. I'm with you. Fuck that. Like, I'm done with that bullshit. You I don't want no felony. So. Unless I get a felony for protecting myself, that's about it. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want no felony. So, oh, all right, let's do another Hold ad on, real quick. We got to do a little ad real quick. Which one What was it, Chris? Oh, yeah, Nature Box. Yo, you got you got to fuck with Nature Box uh, oh, tax. Oh, yeah, dude. Nature Box? Or yeah, Nature Box. What's that like? It's, it's females not. who don't shave the... That's what... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Harry <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> nah, it's, it's, it's healthy snack options. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can go to naturebox, naturebox.com. They got 100 nutritionist-approved snacks. They got something for everybody with zero artificial flavors, colors, sweeteners, zero grams, trans fats, no high fructose corn syrup. All that, shit will kill, all that shit that can kill you in the hood yeah. other than bullets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because fruits and sugars and salt been killing us for years. Exactly. 
So you'll find snacks with the bold flavors you crave without any artificial nonsense in them. So in the afternoon slump, like right about now, because I ain't had no lunch. That's when you need a little nature box. I would love mm. some of those peanut butter pistachio nom-noms, power man. clusters. Ooh. Or the Big Island Ooh. pineapple. What about the sriracha roasted cashews? Yes. Uh, my mm-hmm. personal favorite, the Santa... San Antonio Spurs. San Antonio corn Spurs core sticks. What do they call it for real? Santa Fe corn chips. I don't know why I don't know the name. You do know the name. I really don't. But you like calling it the San Antonio Spurs. Santa Fe <laughs> Because you're trying to make this Spurs joke work for four weeks now. I really and don't that know shit the name. It's not going to go. I don't know the name. So I'm saying, I don't know the name. But anyway. we want to give you the chance to try Nature Box for free with a trial box featuring five of their most popular snacks. Okay? Free snacks. Start your free trial right now by going to naturebox.com slash idiots. You know you're gonna smack. You know you're gonna snack. So get smart about it with NatureBox. Do it. NatureBox.com/slash/idiots to get a free trial box of delicious snacks. Free. Keep tweeting us the pictures and shit. It's cool. Now let's talk about some pop culture shit, man. What do you think about? Uh, because you know I, I was reading some of your tweets. You had the same kind of similar thoughts I had when it came to Iggy Azalea and everybody giving Iggy flack. I think. I think. I think they're being racist. Right. I don't think it's nothing else. Me too. I think it's completely yeah. racial. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Don't preach none of that hip hop shit to me. Yeah. It's racist. They being racist against Iggy Azalea. And it's funny. That's what they doing. They point the finger and they say she's so whack. How many whack artists we done let win? They fucking sitting there talking about. First of all, she's a white bitch that's pretty and she got a fat ass and some nice titties and her clothes fit right and she rapping and they talking about, oh, this person wrote it or that person wrote it. So fucking what? We ain't sitting there talking about who wrote Beyonce record. You know what I mean? Listen, like, I, I, all we're not Dr. sitting there talking about writers. who yeah. wrote Diddy had Sinatra writers. songs. So let's talk about some of the most iconic musicians in history had other people write. Ella yeah. Fitzgerald. What it she is, didn't write her shit. What it is is that Iggy is one of the most striving artists out there right, right now. She's not winning. not just rappers, artists. Yeah. And that's what's hurting them. Right. And that's what's hurting them. And I don't I don't like that shit because it's like, what the fuck? These fucking corny ass hip hop fucking analogies and and the history that they try to compare this shit to to try to make it seem like Iggy Azalea isn't hip hop. Like it's like, shut the fuck up. It's the same thing as a fucking slave master trying to justify slavery to me. Right. You're lying. You're you're lying. That's not your reason for not liking Iggy Azalea. It's because she's a white bitch that's rapping and she's doing well. Just admit it. That's and, it. And you're allowed to not like her for that reason. You're allowed to not like yeah, her for that reason. I'll just say that. But I just don't, you don't, don't, it. don't talk to me shit. in circles and yeah, try to give me all of these righteous reasons. Don't yeah, insult my intelligence. Don't like insult my mother. Don't fucking don't insult do that, man. That's all I want you to do listen. is say, hey, listen, I don't like her because she's a white bitch and she's on and I don't like white bitches. Because I caught myself singing that shit. I don't give a fuck. Do that, do that. I sway my hips while I sing. I had a homeboy who told me And I'm not saying I'm gonna listen to her album or really cop it or anything like that. I'm not a fan of that. But I'll dance I, with I a chick like the in a club when looked. it's on. I like yeah. the way she look. I her think songs she's a star. aren't that bad, and the bitch is a star. I had a homeboy tell me he wouldn't even assign to Gizzy, and I said you would have lost out you on a Mad Bray. You asshole. You would lost out on Mad Bray. I been thought motherfucker should have signed her. You won't sign her, but before, she, before her fucking makeup Bullshit. was done correctly, I said motherfuckers better sign that Iggy Azalea. Dog, I used to have Iggy on the Breakfast Club back in 2011. I believe it. I was at SOBs, me and Duvall yeah. with Iggy. And I, Iggy, I, Iggy I might be saying that because I want to fuck or whatever, but that's not the point. I'm being honest too. But you know, just let you. A lot let of dudes want to fuck. And that's that's the beautiful thing about this is like you could say you don't like Iggy, this, that, the other, but when girls are dancing to that song at the club, you're not going to sit that fucking that song, song out. That song is hot, man. Fuck you're going to be right, right behind them, grinding Seriously, your fucking I don't dick care up who wrote them. it. Fancy. I don't care. Listen, people wrote little Kim raps for years. People write Diddy's raps for Everybody. years. Everybody admits it. Who gives a fuck? Let's let's quit the shenanigans. I don't think, and I don't give a fuck. The shit that they doing to Iggy Azalea is bullying. I don't like bullying. Mm. I don't like that. Neither, I don't you? like people attacking people. There's not trying to be attacked or asking to be attacked. Yeah, if you're gonna bully people, bully people that can do something to you. No, bully the motherfucker. Who want that problem? Mm-hmm. That's For what I'm instance, somebody do uploaded you. A, a dude on Twitter uploaded a record from somebody. And somebody dissed me on Twitter and like made a record and he uploaded. It said uploaded by such and such. And I said I'm gonna smack the shit out you when I see you. Right. And he was like, Oh, why you gonna smack him? I'm like, You uploaded the record, so therefore you felt the same way he felt when he made the diss record. Yeah. So or you gotta, you're snitching. The dude. Either that, way. Either way, you're violating, right? It's like you're either a snitch or you're a bitch for up under the degrees. I'm with tax, though, because I'm an equal opportunity shit talker, but this is what I don't like. I don't like when people come and say things like, yo, 
you always getting on the lame motherfuckers, but you don't ever talk shit to the real niggas. Think about what you're saying. Yeah. I like Why would the I real be talking guys? shit to the real niggas? Exactly. <laughs> They're real niggas. They being real. Like, like, How would course, you? Of course I'm a clown, Mackinan or McConan mm-hmm. or whatever his name is. Why would I clown Mano? Mm-hmm. Or Gucci Man. Yeah. I like Mano's those a real guys. nigga. I like Gucci Man's music. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I clown them? What yeah. if there's a it, reason? It's true though. If there's a reason to clown them, then we can bring it up. I'm clowning whoever. If Tupac was alive, he would have got clowned for that leather vest and all them chains in the bathtub. There you go. I don't give a fuck if Pac is tough. What does that mean? I always feel like this. If you can't kill me, you damn sure ain't going to beat me. That's how I feel. Explain and, and I mean that by you could stomp me out right now here. Everybody in this room could stomp me out to death. I'm going to get up and say the same shit. I'm going to talk shit in again. I'm gonna talk, you understand what I'm saying? Listen, I just, I'm trying to say, so you don't kill me, you lose. I know I know, purple, I know, people like that. Yeah. I always like I, I yeah. always tell my homeboys this. Yeah. There's no need to weep, whip his ass. Because mm-hmm. he's going to keep, keep talking back. shit. You Unless you're going to kill him, <laughs> yep. leave him alone. Leave him alone. That's it's so the same funny. thing as this. When people say, yo, that dude is a snitch. So go kill him. If you ain't gonna kill that motherfucker, stop calling him a snitch because he's gonna snitch on you next. <laughs> you better shut the fuck up. So this girl, she was like, oh, you know that boy told? And I said, yeah, and I ain't gonna do nothing to him. And that's why I ain't telling nobody he a snitch because I don't got nothing to do with that. This how you he ain't know, gonna snitch on me. This oh, how you know. This how you know tax is an honest person. You all right, same, motherfucker. Yeah. This how you know tax is an honest person the same way you know I'm an honest person. A person that has been uh, attacked over shit that they've said and, and keep talking, to say it. That's the motherfucker that's authentic yeah. and believes in what the fuck he's talking about. That's like I can a, tell people you know who strong I can tell people. the King was yeah. what? compared to Malcolm X. I keep explaining people was like, Malcolm was that's that Martin motherfucker. Nah. He sat there and got smacked. That strength. Yeah. yeah. To let somebody keep yeah. hitting you and throwing nah. rocks at you nah. and to continue talking, that's yeah. strength. Now let's have Now I'm not Martin. I'm not gonna not hit your ass back, but <laughs> I'm just trying to say, Martin, you were stronger than us. Now let's have this conversation, because I'm very intrigued by this conversation. I tell people. And I love Malcolm X, but I felt like Malcolm did some shit that showed me he was kind of weak-minded. In yeah, a sense. definitely. Like when he found out the whole situation about Elijah Muhammad, mm-hmm. you ain't supposed to blow that up. You're supposed to go to that man, tell him he's wrong, tell him get his shit together. That's mm-hmm. when the student supposed to become the teacher. Exactly. It shouldn't have been no, I why? don't believe in you no more. I'm mm-hmm. breaking off from you, this but and why? that. What you mean, why? Live your truth. I don't agree with that because he fucked up a whole nation because of it. But if the nation was fucked up, why not do it? It's like slavery was fucked up, so we change it up. We don't go to the founding fathers and go, yo, I just want to tell you guys independently, (laughs) this slavery shit is fucked up, but y'all handle it. Just because Elijah Muhammad was fucking other chicks Mm -hmm. and had got a bunch of girls pregnant didn't make him a bad person. Martin was fucking other other women. But he didn't disagree with just that. He just disagreed with the philosophy. He thought it was manipulative. He thought that we weren't bringing people together. I agree on both ends because... I am the type of person, I'm passionate about my beliefs and principles, so it's like, you know, that's another reason why I'm so honest with my friends, because I feel like, who am I to, like, a snitch? Like, oh, you're a snitch, and then my friend snitches, and I'm I'm okay with it. Okay. No, motherfucker. Yeah. You going too. If I do that to him, I'm doing the same thing to you. you you're not yeah. exempt from that. So I do I do understand Malcolm in that sense where he was like, you know, this, this man that's been teaching me everything. This dude, yeah. and he doesn't but hypocr- follow him. Hypocrisy don't make you a bad person, it just makes you human. And he should have understood that it was his fault for putting Elijah on that kind of pedestal the way he was a god. Exactly. But Elijah put himself on that pedestal really. by judging people that did the things that he did. I'm sorry, if you're going to come down, if you're going to come down and criticize people and then you do the exact same thing that you're criticizing people for, then you're going to get the heat when it comes now, to you. I don't know you. if Elijah ever criticized people for getting pussy and getting other girls pregnant. I don't mm-hmm. know. I can't speak that deep on it. All they, I'm they, saying he is... He did, actually. Because that's his teachings. His teachings was not to it, do that. He said, yeah. if all he has to do is say it once. You're not supposed to fuck other bitches and you're not supposed to get them that's pregnant. Like they, that's like reading the Bible and God telling us thou shalt not kill. And, and then yeah. murdering motherfuckers yeah, and, and God and going to murder game I, down. I, I got to yeah. read Message to the Black Man again. I haven't read in a long time. But all I'm saying is if that's my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know how much people depend on this guy's work. How much it was wor- worth. How much, like, like a Why prime example. Exactly. When, they, when the FBI came to Coretta Scott King or the CIA or whoever and said to her, I or said to her, there. listen, if, if Martin don't stop this shit, we're going to air him out about cheating, yada, yada, yada. And she said, well, go ahead, because this movement is bigger than my marriage. Exactly. That's yeah, kind of the mentality It's different Malcolm because Malcolm was consistent. Malcolm was consistent in his teachings. No, sorry, sorry. Uh, Martin was consistent in what he wanted. He wanted he wanted equality for black people. He wasn't telling black people how to live their lives. He wasn't telling them exactly he what to do. With their okay, well, Reverend's having fucked. Ask Malcolm for was crazy. Let's listen. Malcolm was great, but he, he been, was fucking crazy, not to, too. Not to, he could have been doing it for the people. That. 
Like Malcolm could have been trying to do to uh, what's it called? Criticize. He should have been trying to criticize him for his followers who he thought were being misled. Like if you know somebody who's leading a million people off the side of a cliff, yeah. wouldn't you step in and be like, "Yo, this guy's not leading you in the right direction. You're yeah. about to fall off the yeah, side of a fucking cliff." That's my with him. That's why I do agree, but I, I do agree with that also because it's so much bigger than us. It's so it's so it's so bigger. I respect Coretta for what she did. Don't get me wrong. I think that's yeah. amazing because that could take away from the movement. But if you have someone who's being a hypocrite, I don't think that Martin was being a hypocrite by cheating. I think Martin would go, I'm a Christian. I'm being a hypocrite. No, because he's saying, I'm a Christian. I'm his- the type of person that if Donald Sterling, if I was down with the Clippers, yeah. and I knew Donald Sterling was a racist, but I knew this was bigger than that, I'd say, yo, cut that shit out. I'm going to fuck you up, motherfucker. That's what Malcolm should have said. You know what I mean? In the corner. Okay. And Martin was being a hypocrite because he was a married reverend. You take vows that say you got to be faithful to your wife. But at the same time, he's, on, a, he's, a, he's a Christian, right? I asked for forgiveness. I know I'm born a sinner. That's what I said about uh, Elijah. Malcolm should so say, is even, Elijah, though he's, even though he's a hypocrite. Damn, you and know, I, that and, makes me question and, some and, shit. And, and I think that's what, uh, and, and Elijah Muhammad did speak about hypocrites crazy. So that's probably what Ma- Malcolm was upset about. But he should have been like, even though you're a hypocrite, you're human. You made him a mistake. But if Elijah was going to say that about himself, if Elijah was coming out there and saying, because I look, I know Christians, man. And every time I speak to him, that yes, there's a lot of you should not do this. But at the same time, it's, hey, we can't judge. We fuck up. I yeah. fuck up. I'm a human. And there, that's one of the greatest things about Christianity because it's like, yo, I fuck up. Okay? I, you can't call me a hypocrite because I'm telling you before, but, from the jump, I'm about to fuck my, this shit that's up. That's what Michael mm-hmm. should have did to Elijah and just said, yo, take care of these goddamn babies you got out here. Yeah. That's it. But you know, you, you know what I, mean? I like that conversation. It's like, and then if he doesn't, then you step in. At least give. Yeah. But how do we know he didn't? How do we know he didn't go to him in the first place and say, "Yo, I think you're fucking up." Then Elijah he excommunicated did. him, and, and then he came out I and mean, said, from, "Yo." From what, from what I read in his autobiography and what I saw in the movie, he did. Mm-hmm. And in the movie, he was like, he told him, "I gotta sow my, spread my seed or some crazy shit like." that. Now let's talk about good. Let's talk about good karma, man. Good karma might win you some money with FanDuel.com. Hey, man, look, don't wait till next year. Play more fantasy football for real cash this season over at FanDuel.com. Chris Prince from Detroit, and you know they need it in Detroit, is an avid fantasy football player who has won over seven hundred thousand dollars. He made more money than the city of Detroit on FanDuel.com. <laughs> Playing fantasy sports at FanDuel.com. Join him and the hundreds of thousands of other users who have already won money. You know he could buy seven hundred houses. Yeah. In Detroit, man, no, no, maybe, That's maybe fucking crazy, man. Tons of fucking house. How much is the house in, in Detroit? For? A lot. See, yeah. if Big Ten thousand. If he don't own half of Detroit right now, this guy bought Detroit with his win. He bought the Lions with his win. He owns the Lions after FanDuel.com. One week. Yeah, wow. and they're paying out more than one hundred and seventy million dollars this NFL season. But you have Damn. to play to win. So sign up today. Go to FanDuel.com and click on the microphone in the upper right hand corner. Use our code Brilliant and sign up now. New user special is ending soon. FanDuel will match your first deposit dollar up to 200 bucks. That's up to $200 free. Offer is only good for the first 50 people that use my code BRILLIANT. Don't forget to use my code BRILLIANT. FanDuel.com, where every week is a new season. That's F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com. Sign up today. Now remember, this leader in one-week fantasy football leagues. The money is real. Entry fees start at just a dollar. You put in a dollar, they're going to match it. You put in 200 they're going to match it. There's no season-long commitment, no upfront fees. Play each week or whenever you want to play. Okay, set a new lineup each week and win every week if you are good enough. The fun doesn't stop when the NFL season ends. They got NBA leagues and they're bigger than ever. So remember, I want to shout out to DMV Skins who tweeted us to say he won one hundred fifty dollars on FanDuel off of just two dollars a two dollar entry fee. Okay, he said it couldn't have done it without it. That's right, you couldn't have done it without us. But we want our cut. So send that over to info at brilliantidiots.com. Send that money. You could PayPal it to us. We have all these accounts available. That's it. That's it. All right, now tax. Let's go back to talking about violence a little bit, because I have wow. a theory that you can. I can always tell when somebody's never been punched in the face. <sighs> I can always tell when nev- somebody how never been beat up. Just the way they talk. Yeah. Especially people who feel like they're part of the hip hop culture, but they may just be in it because of what they do, radio DJing. Like they, it's a difference between hip hop culture and just actual the hood, the street culture. Like it's a difference. Mm-hmm. And like just the like the way they be talking. Like they'll say things like. He's always, they'll, they'll say things like, yeah, he's always dick riding. Or he always got such and such dick in his mouth. It's like, I can tell by that language. Exactly. That you never you know got why? punched in the face. Because you can't say that to a man without him punching you in your face? You don't talk like that. I always tell That's people the story. I was in sixth grade. The dude was in high school. I, I wish him. I lived your life up to seventh grade. Yeah. Like, your life up to seventh grade is fascinating to me. Shit. 
Way before that, now <laughs> fourth grade, I ran a hedge fund. Bobby Smurda selling crack since the fifth grade. I was literally grade. outside. Okay, so after you after you leave Smurda from him selling crack right. with grade, jelly flip flops on, I'm like <laughs> crack. But I always tell a story. I told dude suck my dick. He was in high school. He smacked the shit out of me like flames. My face was like, if I was white, it would have been red. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I see this dude years later. Now I'm in the street, full fledged in the street. The whole neighborhood scared of me. Everybody don't want it with me. And I see this dude and I see him and he's like nervous. He's thinking I'm going to attack him. And I'm like, yo, what up? What up? Ready? The dude name was Ready. I'm going to shout him out or whatever. Because he saved my life by smacking the shit out of me all them years ago. Because I might have told the wrong person to suck my dick what and they might have killed me. Because in, in black culture in the neighborhood, saying suck my dick is the most, like, almost the top disrespectful thing you could say. That was a life lesson my father taught me. My father yeah. taught me early on. He said, do not tell a man to suck your dick unless you're ready to kill that man or die. Yeah. yeah. One to two. I remember when I first, I went to acting school. I went to an acting school called Tada, Tada, and um, a white kid in the class, and he was like, yeah, suck my cock. And I was like, Woof. Straight hope. Ooh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Ooh, you about to die, motherfucker. And I had to catch myself and I had to realize that he's not from where I'm from. He don't know no better. He doesn't know that saying suck my cock could end his life. You but know don't what you mean? feel like imagine imagine it right now it's a person like that, but they're in hip hop. Like they claim to be of the culture and well, they're you like that. You gotta show them. You gotta show them. Cause even though you're not where I'm from. You're, you're, where you're I'm part at of this now. culture. You listen to the same music the teachers Word I listen up. to. You know what's what's taken lightly and what's not. You know what's being taken as disrespect. And Even what's if not. he doesn't know that, you made a great point. You're in that world now. Mm -hmm. If we go to Italy, right, and for us, what is it like when we'd say, "Hey, what's up?" or something like that, throw my hand, my fingers yeah. in the sky, or something like that. You could give a peace sign. A peace sign in America is cool. I think a peace sign in Italy from the neck is "fuck you." Mm -hmm. You gotta live with that being "fuck you" in Italy because that's where you are. Exactly. When in Rome, be like the Romans. So get with that Roman exactly. shit. So it is important if you're gonna be part of that culture. It's your job maybe to understand the disrespect that comes along with saying "suck my dick." I remember talking to some LA bloods, and he was like, "Yeah, ain't no real bloods in New York." I said, "Well, go to New York and tell them that." <laughs> <laughs> They'll be ready to show you. Yeah, yeah but maybe you can tell him that in LA, yeah. but you ain't gonna say that in New York. I don't know if it's real blood in New York, but I know it's real Crips in Jersey. That means anything. It's real everything fact. in Jersey. Jersey gangbanging for real. Oh man, Jersey's and you know what's so funny? They have, it's, it's, they about fourteen years back. It's, it's so funny. It's what like, do you mean? Like it's like Brownsville, nineteen ninety two. They doing, oh, yeah, doing and they doing yeah, yeah. they doing California crimes they, in New uh, Jersey. People's moms, girlfriends, they real, they go. I'm gonna hit you on the sky tail when we're ready to drive yeah. by but on this know, motherfucker's house. It's so house. funny because it's, it's, it be like my dudes in Jersey who's involved in that kind of stuff who'll be like they'll see the stuff that's going on and be like. Y'all, I'm going to hurt this guy when I see him. Like, it's going to go. And I'm like, nah, I leave that alone. And they like, no, you know what? You leave that alone. We still out here. And what he's doing is disrespectful. Yeah, so it may not bother you, but it bothers me. It bothers me. me. So since yeah, exactly. it bothers me, I'm going to go handle that. Don't even tell me. I don't mm -hmm. want to know. <laughs> don't make me That's the point yeah. I'm at right now. You know I don't really have to. I don't have to do anything to anybody. Word. Don't make me in the All I got to do is not like you when somebody might attack you. You know what I mean? I just that's that's what I live off of now. I can't afford to hit anybody. Right. If I have a fight with Charlemagne right now, he call the cops. The minimum I'm gonna get is twelve to life. Nobody really? got time for that. Of a fight. So yeah, but you don't want to do twelve to life. No, exactly. That's why any. That's why I told you if I catch a felony, it would have to be for me protecting myself. Yeah. So why why what does that do? What does the retaliation do? Like it maintains what? It maintains the image. It maintains. No, it keeps the... you alive in the hood. When you're in the hood, you. It, your reputation it, is that important? When people you, know you fooled, you fool. Yeah, you're either going to be predator or prey. Yeah. And you have to decide what you want to be early in your life. So if I decide that I want to be a gangster at two, I have to maintain that shit until I die or move out the hood. Because what happens is that somebody says, this dude ain't tough no more. Boom. It's like a, so you got to bust but, a but, fresh no, ass. But but Jay-Z said it, man. They try you when your gun go it, cold. It's deeper than the hood, though. <laughs> because even when you get to a certain level, People think they can try you just because, oh, he ain't going to do nothing because of the position. Even in corporate in. America. Exactly. You so working? Some... You don't make no moves this year? Who are you? Nobody. You don't make the Forbes list? Those dudes don't make the Forbes Oh, he didn't make the Forbes list this year. He didn't do this. Same like thing. With... You just a continuously thing of proving yourself. Like, with the, like that can I get a drop shit? If, if certain things didn't get nipped in the bud, it's like motherfuckers thought would keep, the, keep thinking they could do shit like that. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? 
So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta that create, you gotta create me, a defense around people. You gotta make it hard for people to say, yo, you know what? I can't just be running up on that dude. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? E40. But actually no, I don't. Me. I don't in my life have to do that. I think that's really you some hood shit. I don't in my and I and it sucks that you got to put up with that. I it really, is. it's like but international you know, you're politics. You're getting the beef right so. now. I always tell people that I tell everybody I believe everybody should own a gun, even the preacher. Right. Because you never know when you got to protect your family. Right. Now. A person to always say, I don't live that life. Yeah. But you don't live that life until it happens to you. And now you're living that life. So when I go out of town to certain places and I go places and they got the door open and they like, I'm like, motherfucker, lock the door. And they like, oh, it ain't like that. Oh, it ain't like that until it happens. Will you will you like to be the person on the news that says, This never happens in this area? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, it will. That's why it's hard. Shit, shit happens. It's insurance. Isn't it frustrating? It's, exactly. it's something you got to deal with. Like, it is. Just, like, why do I have to, like, you're at a stage in your life where, like, why do I have to knock somebody out because they did something? It's like, it's but just that's why annoying. I stay out the way. You ever like, you, you be around me. You be around my goons. What do we always say? We stand out the way. Yeah, and I agree. But I don't, go, I don't gotta be first in the club. of all. Uh, this is how you you wanna you wanna really identify a dude that self proclaims himself as gangster, tough, or a thug. Uh -huh. He ain't looking for problems. None. And he's because he know what he's capable of. Yeah. And he's laughing. He knows. And joking. Dude, that's so he's having he's a not good looking time. for problems. That's this weird. is how all yeah. my friends are. We joke and carry on. And when it happens, it happens. It's gonna go down. We's out Angela E. This dude, he was wilding, pushing us. Ah, yeah. he's out the way. Let me take this picture of Angela E. We, yeah. I'm letting him do it. Cause I know what if the fuck is gonna down, happen absolutely. to him yeah. if I say something to him. Absolutely. Not from me. From these three dudes. From them females, from the bar, t from whoever in here. You understand? So I want to avoid the yeah. issue. The dude keeps on going, keeps on going. That's I'm right. stopping. I'm like, damn, damn, man, this dude just won't stop. He's going to get beat up. And then her friend turns around and says something to them. I ain't even tell my mans about him yet. That he was violating all night. Yeah. He's seen it. Yo, what the fuck you doing? There you go. He's gone. Off the count. That fast. Bye. One less dude in the club. But, but it didn't have to go that way. It didn't have to go that way, but you know you gotta yeah. listen. It's a rule in Islam. They it say never it didn't be, have to go that way. In Islam, they say never be the aggressor uh, by words or action, but in the event you are attacked, you stick together, you handle your business, you battle yeah. the solid wall. Malcolm X said, "Be respectful, be courteous, show respect, have manners." Somebody put their hands on you, you send them to the cemetery. Like. That's just the law of the land sometimes. I just, I, honestly, deep down, I don't believe it. Like, I don't believe if somebody came at me that I'm going to get somebody to go bury that person. Oh, no, listen, I just listen, don't, it's I not part of me, my life, walked, and that's not going to happen. I walked now. away from this, for the same reason tax is right now, when he says, because I know how my dude's going to turn up. But some things are out of your hand. Like, one night we walked out of the, um, we walked out of the club. What's that club? Is that Griffin? Is Griffin still open? I remember Griffin. We walked Griffin. out of Griffin one night. Yeah. It's this white girl. She's drunk as hell. She's staggering, right? Yeah. So I'm fucking with the girl. I'm like, Girl, you better chill out. Yo, you better find somebody to be with. That's how you get fucked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she was like, fuck you, whatever, whatever. I said, yeah, you're going to go suck somebody's dick, though. You end up sucking the wrong dick, drunk ass. So she goes and gets a dude. This white dude comes over. He gives me a pound, right? And he, he, he leans into me and he goes, yeah. And I said, what you mean, yeah? He goes, yeah, you, you know. I said, man, you better get the fuck. Before I can even say get the fuck. <laughs> Grabs this dude by the chest, slaps him in the face, slaps him to the ground. He getting stomped out. I'm like, and we just walk off nice and calm. But that was that guy's fault. Mm -hmm. That was his fault. He didn't have to do that. He should have checked his girl for walking around being drunk, acting crazy. Oh, that's what it was. The girl was fucking with one of my homeboys. Didn't even know the dude, and I'm telling her that's how you gonna get fucked. Yeah, that's yeah. Keep yeah. fucking around. You gonna get fucked. Remember, suck some strange the dick. <laughs> that's his fault. Yeah. Shit happens, man. It just sucks that, like, I don't know, it sucks if you, you have to feel like, even at this stage in your career, that you have to, like, uphold some sort of reputation. You know what I mean? Like, that if somebody does something to you that you can't just take legal matters. Like, I feel like you're at the oh, legal no, matters no, 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 part no, no, of your no, no, career. Let's be, yeah. let's be clear. I'll snitch in a heartbeat. I don't give a fuck. That's I, what I'm saying. I'll like, press just charges in a motherfucker. Press charge? Like, if you're it's the right person. Like, like, yeah. like, 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 all of these celebrities that be saying they're going to do this and that to me, Stop let one of these it. motherfuckers I know got bread Get put the hands bread, on exactly. Got your yeah. mind. So you're not going to do nothing if Chingy punch you in the face. I'm going to beat, Chingy will get beat up. Because Chingy, I, I, Chingy I, doesn't have the bread to sue. That's the problem. It's like, it's like somebody hits you in a Saturn. You got to fucking beat him up. Pharrell smacks the shit out you right now. What you going to 
do he's it. Happy. Bro, beat he's up. happy. He <laughs> no, he's happy. No, you sue that no, motherfucker. I'm getting that happy money. No, I'm suing Pharrell. I want that despicable me too money. I would be crying I'm Pharrell, on, on Fox Jay. News exactly. Network. <laughs> you fight the broke ones, you sue the fucking rich ones. And it was crazy because I just was listening to Happy. Like, I don't know why he attacked me. You're going to turn happy to angry. We're going to wrap up with this, right? I want to talk about the Chingy shit because people wonder why me and Chingy got issues. Chingy came on Wendy Williams show years ago. I think he had Jack. I don't know what the, I don't know what album he had. It was some album he had out, right? Yeah. And he sits down and I'm telling him I think he's one of the wackest rappers of all time. It's on YouTube. You can find him. I'm like, yo, I think you are terrible. I'm like, it's okay though. I'm like, you got gods like Rakim and you got whack guys like you. Yeah. I'm just I'm in right. He had nothing to say then. He's like, okay, that's cool. That's your opinion, whatever, whatever. Two weeks later, he makes a viral video. Fuck Charlemagne. He only make fifty thousand dollars a year. He's a hating ass nigga, this and that. Mm. Why you ain't say that right then and there? Yeah. So ever since then, I don't respect you no more. Like that's yeah. all about that. I don't. I don't respect you as a he man. He works at Wingstop now too. He, he works at. He works at Wingstop. He works. <laughs> 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 I, I, I can find it too I seen a girl tweet I just got some lemon pepper wings And y'all won't believe Who served them to me <laughs> But is that not some clown shit though? Yeah definitely I respect if you, Whatever you say to me in my face or I can Yeah I'm not it. gonna say nothing to you Behind your back That I'm not gonna say to your face It's It's interesting though I agree with that completely But I also feel like He's in your field right there He's in your zone Like that's where you're a beast You know like Basically going at you on the radio Is like playing Jordan one on one Mm-hmm. In basketball Now Chingy might be able to go at Jordan one on one At rap But he's not gonna win yeah, at basketball nobody one on one Fair rap. enough But you get the point I'm saying yeah, You know yeah, what yeah. I mean Like, So it's like I understand the intimidation factor In that situation Put you guys basically In a neutral place In a box Just the two of you Maybe he would've said How he feels I saw him in the airport Walked right by him Actually I was jogging Cause I'm trying to catch my flight So I'm looking at it, You know you know, you jogging So basically you ran from him I'm like Yeah I ran from Chingy <laughs> You ran yeah, from right? Chingy <laughs> So, so, that's why he put the video out there. Like, this many new developments. So you know, you, many new developments. You know, you, you know you're jogging in the airport, and then you're looking like, I'm like, oh, shit, that's I'm like, yeah. so you slow down a little bit, and he's just yeah. looking. I'm like, yeah. you know when you ran right, away, whatever. he was like, yeah, run, motherfucker. <laughs> run, motherfucker. I see you. Bitch-ass motherfucker. Nah, that's why, that's, Your that's, flight's that's, delayed. This is bullshit. But that's why I can never have no respect for him. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Yeah, because man shit. Man, I don't. Man, that's shit. what I, I don't like. I don't like shit like that. I don't like shit like Dude, that. Oh, can some I... dudes was talking about me on World Star. I asked him on Twitter. I said, "Yo, yo, I said, yo, y'all was talking about me. Motherfucker, gonna tell me he wasn't talking about me. It was clear he was. That rap group. Yeah, um, yeah. Troy F. Crew, BSB, and, I, and, it, and it was clear that they was talking about oh, I thought me. You and I was about like, the other dudes. I said, "Why the fuck? How you gonna tell me you wasn't talking about me, motherfucker? You don't like Troy, do you? No. Nah. Why not? I don't got nothing against Troy. I I I feel like he should do whatever he does. He's a liar. He lying about everything he do, like everything. Now, it ain't my place to sit here and expose the dude, but when you start, you know what I mean? When you start saying shit like, in Brooklyn, it's very hard to be a person from Brooklyn and say shit like, I was the dude with the Rolex and the Benz because the goons either was trying to rob you or the bitches was trying to fuck you. Yeah. And we don't know neither one from you. Yeah. So it's like, you serious? So when he's when they ask him shit like, oh, so did you um did you did you send the guy to beat McConan up? And he says, no, I didn't send the guy to beat McConan up. Um, my 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 city loves me like the same way Drake is loved in his city. And I'm like, nigga, what? What huh. the fuck are you talking about? Like, you can't fill up a bathroom of Brooklyn dudes. <laughs> you might Troy make dope music though. I, I like I like New York City the album. That shit was hard. I heard, and up. I had it. I had issues with him then. A girl played that album for me, Leaving Greenhouse, and I was like, damn, this shit was well put together. Everything since then to me was trash. It was trash to me. Like, a, you know? the, what, was the, what was the mixtape? I remember the last mixtape. And I don't, you know what I don't like about Troy? He's a bully. He bullies pussies. He bully writers and Complex and Vice. He don't bully gangsters. Go bully somebody that wants a problem. Don't come after a hairdresser. Go after the dude that says, I want an issue. Ransom came at him and said he wanted an issue. He said, nothing to Ransom. He said, Ransom ain't relevant. He ain't on my level. Him and Ransom sold the same amount of records. Fuck you mean he ain't relevant. Yeah. Fuck you mean he ain't on your level. But you go attack McConan when McConan says, I don't like that remix. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not my style. I want to fight the dude that wants to fight. So how come I don't want to fight the little white dude in the office that's a nerd and you calling him a weirdo. He's being him. He's a fucking nerd. He's a writer. 
So why do you think rappers don't address that? Like, why do you think other rappers from Brooklyn, if, if you know what they, what you're saying is true, that Troy is not on It's true. How come they don't say that? Ain't a rapper from Brooklyn that's going to say it ain't true. Mm. Rappers from Bro- rappers from Brooklyn that do stuff with Troy Ave is doing stuff with Troy Ave because he's on radio and yeah. he has radio right now. So they Certain people got to maintain relevancy yeah. and, and do shit. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not like you know what I mean. Like it's I, just like I said. He could, and the thing he say he the king of the city and shit like that. He don't try to help nobody. He had ample time. He could have he could have remixed Bobby Schmurder, um um hot nigga yeah, in the yeah. beginning. But he waited until 50 other people did it. You know what I mean? You in the city. You supposed to be the first person on that. A little young kid got something hot, you remix it, put him on. Help him out. But he don't want to help nobody out. It's everything, is, everything is a selfish move. And that's why I always make sure to just speak my opinion in real shit. Because you know he, Manolo Rose wrote his, his only single that's hot. What's the real situation with that, him and Manolo? Um, Manolo, Manolo don't got no ill will towards him because he don't care because he's a creator. Yeah. He's a creative, so he got so many records, don't matter. But what happened was that Troy Ave heard the record, all about the money, and then he said he wanted the record. Manolo was going to send the record and the paperwork over at the same time. Troy Ave didn't even wait for the record or the paperwork. He looped the beat and then did the record. Manolo gets a call saying, yo, you on the radio. He's like, what? But, you know, at the same time, he's like, damn, I'm on the radio. Right. This is cool. So it's a look. Yeah. So, you know, he does the video with him and whatever. And at the video shoot, he asks him, he's like, yo, man, I need you to tweet my new record that's coming out, Run Ricky Run. And he tells him, I only tweet BSB music. Like, motherfucker, damn. you ducking a motherfucker for a record you wrote. You know what I mean? As far as doing the paperwork. He gave you a record. You went and looped the beat on your own. He asked you to tweet a record out and you tell him no. And then he does a big show in the city after that. Elliot Wilson um, and Fuck Flex is him as DJ and, and he don't even bring him out for that. So that's what really made me expose him. I'm like, you don't even want to give this dude a look. A dude that gave you your only known hit. You know what I mean? Your only known song all about the money. You don't want to give him a look. So I had to expose him because I'm like, first of all, you're not even tough. If you want to be honest, if you want me, if you want me to be honest, you're not tough. Do you see them out? Out like where? Just anywhere, clubs. Groups. Nah, I don't really go out like that. But they be in clubs because they get booked. But he never was in clubs. He wasn't in parties. There's nobody that could find Troy having a picture in a club from back in the days. Clubs in Brooklyn, the Elks, Club Rain. He wasn't in those clubs because we was there. He wasn't there. You know what I mean? And he's a fraud. Like, he really is. He's a he's like MC Gusto. And people don't know because they're afraid because he's bullying a whole bunch of white people. They fucking came from... Green Bay, and they and he just attacked Green them. Green Bay, because he he walk around with jerseys and 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 ugly dudes that think they tough yeah. and intimidates them, and he ain't doing that to nobody that's tough. That's my whole thing. He not doing that to nobody that's tough, and that's what I don't like. It's like pick on the dudes that want it. Stop picking on writers and dudes that say they don't like your music. If you don't, if somebody don't like your music, the fuck am I gonna do? You know how much people don't like not even Supreme music? I'm gonna come out and fight all these motherfuckers. I'm gonna come out and fight fifty gays a day, shit like that. Like, are you serious? And this is what you do. He attack people because they don't like it. Oh, you don't like my record? We gonna BSB gonna see you. We about violence. You ain't about no fucking violence, man. What was the relationship with Naima? Naima, Naima, um, you know, I always worked with Naima yeah. from Jump, you know what I mean? Like, na, you know, I just I just helped Naima cultivate, like, as far as, like, helping her make records and shit like that. And now she she good. She don't need help for nothing, you know what I mean? She just getting it's just a it's just a great mess, you know what I mean? Well, let's Gucci let's, right let's end this on a positive note, man. If you had to um shoot one person and get away with it, mm. rap or celebrity. Great question. Be? Damn, man. That's deep. Rap us one like, person in the world. Kill him. Just a little flesh wound to let him know shit. Flesh yeah. wound. Let me see. Uh, what's um Bill O'Reilly? What? I like yeah. Bill. Yo, Bill O'Reilly. Bill, Bill is interesting, man. I like Bill O'Reilly because he fearless. Exactly. Like, I, I you literally respect love watching it. him yeah. when you talk. I'd be like, Yo, we we're just talking about Bill this. Is a fucking you G. you watch CNN, right? Yeah. So this is my problem with CNN. We were just talking about this. I agree. I know all this information already. Mm -hmm. Like, you're giving me opinions that I already know and agree with. When I watch Fox News, I might disagree with all the shit, but it's new and interesting point of views on the same issues. So when I watch Bill O'Reilly argue this shit, I'm like, yo, I might not agree with this shit, but I appreciate the intellect it took. To argue this point, you know what I thought about. With you know that, what I'm saying? What I oh about. yeah, definitely. You know, like yeah. I get excited that's over that. That's why it's okay to talk to people who you disagree I with. I prefer exactly. to talk to people okay. I disagree with, and I don't have to say fuck you just because I disagree with you. You know, mm-hmm. we don't have to share the same views, the no. same principles, nothing. Let's just have a nice, intelligent. The real reason I want to shoot Bill O'Reilly is I want to debate with him. 
And so you they just paid him, dog. Like, if you don't debate me, I'm going to shoot you, Bill O'Reilly. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you can have but, an honest debate at that point in time. Yo, what's your opinion, though? What's your opinion, though? <laughs> click, click. What is your opinion, man? No, because I, 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 I value a lot of stuff that he says. You know what I mean? Me but at the same time, I just be like, you motherfucker. You know what I mean? It's almost like the I had this conversation with a sergeant in jail. And he said, let me ask you this question. Barack Obama just won presidency. He said, why are black people so happy that Barack Obama won? I said, because we never win. Word. I said, the same reason we act like we didn't know OJ killed Nicole. Word. We know OJ did that shit, but, but we just never w. win. Word up. So Word it was up. just a victory. Like, yeah. we know you did it, motherfucker, but damn, we happy for you. You yeah, know what I mean? But, so uh, yeah, so but, why is this so surprising when white people like Iggy Azalea? Or Macklemore. Yeah, we have. That's their it's win. Hey, yo, that's, I don't, that's I don't even got no beef with Macklemore. Like, I really had an issue when they came in no, Macklemore. No, I'm annoyed, I'm annoyed with Macklemore. I'm annoyed with Macklemore. I kind of like that shit. I'm going to tell you. That video was fly as a motherfucker. Oh, the, the song was hot. How could you like stunting and not like Macklemore? No, I'm fucking with Macklemore. But I'm going to tell you something. No, it's the philosophy. I'm going to tell you my issue with Macklemore. I think Macklemore tells... The hip hop community, what they want to hear when exactly. they want to hear. Macklemore like needs some won, Bill when he, O'Reilly. When he won the Grammy, no, first he thing, that, when he won the he Grammy, did that he gay like, shit, the, the gay song. I said, no, that was dope. That's fearless. No, no I like, no, I appreciate it. No, that wasn't fearless. Yeah, that was fearless, man. That was a fucking. That was a job. You think that, that was, was a publicity stunt? Yes. You Interesting. Think that, was his, uh, that was his Illuminati sacrifice. He knew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yo, yo. Anybody, if Jay Z come out right now and say some shit like. I don't know, man. But he had that day. record. You know the type of... He had let's, that record no, years prior, though. Let's cry. Let's, let's, Macklemore. Oh, he did? Macklemore had all oh, of them records years prior. Let's Macklemore. clarify. Let's clarify your That's point how I felt. I thought it was like a complete... You thought it was a publicity study. It's not like you're, yeah. you're upset that it's a record about gay marriage. Nah, you're upset that you care. thought he was he was trying to take advantage of the pro-gay attitude yeah. in the music to do it. And, 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 and the and acceptance that, that goes on with it now. Like, exactly. He had that song years, a couple years Fair, prior. Which is fine. And he was smart then. And he knew it in. He was ahead of the game. It was great. He was like, yo, this gay shit is popping. How many years ago I told motherfuckers I said, just come out and say you're a faggot, motherfucker. You don't win. That's what I've been telling people, yo. But you gotta be hardcore, though. You gotta be a gangster. Yeah, you gotta be a gangster. Gotta be a gangster. I got a movie yeah. idea. And about I'm gonna that. suck your dick. Yeah. Listen, listen. The only my only problem with Macklemore is the fact that he tells hip hop what they want to hear when they want to hear it. He wins the Grammy. He goes, Kendrick should have won. You know, Azalea Banks. That say, was like Azalea Banks say something so about pussy. Him. Matter of fact, that's when I stopped fucking with no, him. No, listen. What about when he couple? said Matt, when he said Kendrick should have won? I was like, motherfucker, you lost you my won, vote. You bro. I, I come on. Ago, when Azalea Banks put him under the gun and was like. You know, he's whatever white privilege. He jumps out there like, yeah, I am here because of white privilege and this and that. Like, man, fuck all man, that. Yeah, fuck these niggas' opinion. Fuck them. This shit ain't got nothing to do. Like, be you, man. I'm going to see him when his album come out. We're going to have a conversation about that. I'm like, man, if you don't do you. Because last time I saw Macklemore, you know what he said to me? He was like, yo, man, I just I feel like a couple people in the industry you're becoming too, too friendly with. And when you interview them, I don't like the way you interview them. Macklemore told me this. Mm. Right? That made me feel like shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm like, all right. I'm about to get in a fight in the studio now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a fuck. You're gonna Mac choose Macklemore to beat up <laughs> of all the people no, you could fight with. I'm saying that's not what all I'm the saying. In what I'm saying is he's telling me that he thinks I'm lighting yeah, yeah, an yeah. interview. Yeah, yeah. You said I'm about to get in a fight in the studio. I'm talking about the next person I interview. Oh, I thought you were going to fight yeah, Macklemore. Yeah, 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 I thought yeah, you yeah, lose yeah. all your street cred yeah, if yeah. the one person yeah, you... But you don't fight Fredro, but, but, but you fight Macklemore? No, but that's when I had to catch myself. This was before Fredro, actually. Oh. That's when I had to catch myself and say, you can't... Yeah, you got you to fight like Trick Trick in the studio. <laughs> like, you know what, Trick Trick? There's no fly zone is getting out of hand. But no, but that's when I had to, that's what, but listen, when I had to catch myself and say, you know what? <laughs> you, can't, you can't worry about the opinions of others because the opinions of others will get you fucked up. Exactly. It's the same mentality you got to carry in the hood. You cannot yeah. worry about what these motherfuckers think because the hood don't motherfucking love you. Mm -hmm. So you can't let a motherfucker tell you, yo, you should have did this, you should have did that. You lightening up, whatever, whatever. Nah, motherfucker. I'm doing this because this is what I felt like doing at the time. Mm -hmm. When a motherfucker needs to get got at, he'll get got at. But if they don't, we're going to have a nice piece of Just like what we, cool. what we were saying the whole time, stop acting for other people. Yeah. I'm not acting, man. I'm me, man. Exactly. And Be I think, you. Yo, people, that. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's yeah, worried about people, that shit. I bring people to my Thanksgiving. I got a whole bunch of old people in my family. They ain't in their 90s, what? 80s, whole bunch of great aunts. <laughs> and they see me like talking regularly and being myself. They like, yo, like, they wish they could be themselves around their family. And I'm like, you need to be yourself around your family just in case you end up on the news and your aunt be saying some shit like, well, he, he never did nothing to nobody. 
My <laughs> uncle get on there and say, well, we know he did something to a couple motherfuckers, uh, <laughs> but he didn't deserve this. He didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. He didn't do that. Tax Stone, I want to thank you for joining us, man. Thank you, man. Why thank you, you and Andrew, on? man. The ice cream man named me Tax, man. You know, like... What, you used to fucking make him pay you to come through the hood? I used to tax the kids at the ice cream truck. <laughs> what the fuck? What you mean, yo? I used to go to ice cream truck. This like, was back in second was, grade. Yeah, this it was very early in my life. But but what it was was it was like I'm big on respect. So if I felt like you disrespected me, I will find whatever way to disrespect you. So I started robbing people just to disrespect them. It for wasn't because I needed them for their yeah. money at the ice cream truck. Okay. Yeah. So the kids did like we used to play crate ball, and this one group of kids that lived down the block will always come and dunk and rip it down. And rip the nails down. So what I used to do was, when the ice cream man come, and they going out to get their mother from their mother, when they come back out, I'll take it, because I knew they didn't want to fight me. You know what I mean? I'd be like, give me the fucking money. Y'all not getting nothing. And the ice cream man used to be mad at me, and he just started calling me tax. He's like, you always taxing somebody. And I just, I just my name been tax ever since. Where did Stone come from? Stone, Stone is a gang. Okay. You know? Striving to overcome negative energy. It's a gang. It's an acronym. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know why? Because cause all get all, 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 you know? <laughs> you know, it's, it is. Stone Cold Killers. You know, I'm not really, I don't consider myself a gang banger because I'm not outside. I'm not I'm not going to fight anybody over my color or anything. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. A gang leader could suck my dick. Like, and yeah. that's real shit. I would refuse to fight a motherfucker because he wearing a color. Like, that ain't my style. But, you know what I mean? I was a kid and I just was involved with it. And, you know, I just always had leadership qualities. And, you know, I was down with it. And then that was it. That's the acronym, though. Uh, striving to overcome negative energy because everything always starts off good. And when you add too many fucking niggas and niggers, E R S, you understand? Shit gets fucked up. Saying that Black Panthers started off positive and then it went left. You know what I mean? And Crips and Bloods was created, all sorts of other gangs. You know what I mean? But that's that's all it really is. And I, I'm just bringing it back to that because I don't I don't I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of gang banging. I'm not. Right. I think that shit is stupid. I feel stupid forever gang banging. Well, follow at Tax Stone on Twitter. He's a great follow. Yeah, uh, thank you for of, coming through, a, man. A lot thank of capital you. letters and exclamation marks on thank his you. on his Twitter. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, um, Charlemagne. Yeah, appreciate we appreciate you man. you, man. And as always, if you listen to this podcast and you think we're motherfucking brilliant and you learned a thing or two, you're absolutely right. Yes, sir. If you think we're a couple motherfucking idiots, you think tax is a motherfucking idiot, you think we don't know shit, hey, you might be right, too. Don't what tell if, him that shit. Yeah, what, you'll get shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will get no ice cream. <laughs> no ice cream, motherfucker. <laughs> this is the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.